Comcast Game of the Week, sponsored by Prime Time Pizza. Jeff Fulton and Andy Dalzell here. And as Chris said, this is the game you've all been waiting for, the Crosstown Rivalry. Loveland Indians, the visiting team tonight, but on their home field to play the Thompson Valley Eagles for bragging rights in the city of Loveland. And, Jeff, this is the kind of game when records really don't matter, do they? You can toss all that out the window. You're, You're going to really, have two fired-up yeah. football teams. You really can. But more than that, I think this is bigger than Ohio State, Michigan. This is bigger than Penn State and Pittsburgh because in this town, you got to live in this town with a loss. So I expect both teams to come out, as they say, very excited and very fired up. Well, they should be. Loveland coming off a, a tough loss last week to a Fort Collins team that really was impressive despite the fact not having won a game before. Loveland's got some bouncing back to do, and from what we hear, they had a pretty good week of practice. Probably one of the tougher weeks of practice they've had in a while is uh, they lost at home to a team that hadn't won a football game yet. Thompson Valley coming off a tough loss on the road on AstroTurf. They're happy to be back on grass. Well, for the Loveland Indians, there is a sense of urgency tonight because a loss would really dampen their playoff hopes. They are 17th in the state right now in the playoff ranking of the 5A leagues, and they need to be in the 16th spot or they're not going to go. And so tonight, I think you're going to see Loveland's best effort up front. Well, we certainly hope so. They do have some injuries they're overcoming. We'll see how that plays out tonight. Thompson Valley, well, they don't need any other reason to win tonight other than they're playing Loveland, and that's about all you can say about it. We've watched this game over the years, and more often than not, it's a hard-fought, well-played football game. And it's nice that it's later in the season this year so that even a team that struggles a little bit record-wise, like the Eagles, have a chance to really get fired up and themselves have a great week of practice to put it all on the line tonight. Well, they got something to look forward to coming into this week of the season, and they're hoping to walk away with a victory tonight. The rest of the season wouldn't mean a whole lot, uh, even if they didn't win any more games. If they can beat Loveland tonight, the Eagles will be happy at the end of the season. But it remains to be seen. That's why they play the football game. We'll be right back with the opening kickoff of the Crosstown matchup right after this. Welcome back to Ray Patterson Field. Jeff Fulton and Andy Delzell along with the rest of the Comcast crew here. And we're just set for kickoff. The game you've been waiting for in the Comcast Game of the Week sponsored by Primetime Pizza. Loveland and Thompson Valley. And here we go. Thompson Valley will receive. They're in the black jerseys tonight. It's a low line drive kick that dribbles and rolls into the end zone for a touchback as Ryan Molesworth lets it go. And the Eagles will start their first offensive possession at their own 20-yard line. And um, looking in the program here, Jeff, uh, yeah. Coach Jones for Thompson Valley says this is the most evenly matched these two teams have been in the last five years. And, you know, I have to say I agree. Thompson Valley struggled the last couple of years while Loveland has uh, posted some pretty impressive records and gone to the playoffs where they haven't fared so well. But uh, certainly in the regular season, Loveland has been dominant the last couple of years. They've stumbled a bit in this campaign. Well, the Eagles are only one game behind in the standings, and so this is a huge thing as far as even it up time. Well, they'll get the start first. Clint Miller is under center. To pass on first down, looking at the far side, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by Loveland on the first play of the football game, and the man who made the pick for the Indians is the cornerback, Greg, or excuse me, the safety, Greg Gebhardt. As he picks it off and Loveland takes over a turnover on play number one at the Eagle 24-yard line. Jeff, this a is, tough yeah. call on first down. Well, I like the play action. It held those linebackers in there, and the DBs just played. Uh, Gebhardt made a real nice play, but this is worst-case scenario again for the Eagles and best-case scenario for Coach Poovey's team. Well, the Loveland offense comes out. We barely got to tell you about the Eagle yeah, it went quick, offensive didn't it? side. 
as they send Corey Hogue out to run the Indian offense. Full house backfield, option right. Boy, he's got a lane. Pitch and a lot of room to run on the near side and down inside the 10 yard line that time is Brennan Ames. The 5'7", 154 pound junior takes the pitch from Corey Hogan, has a nice lane to run in. Uh, and the defense rallied real well that time. It was it ended up being a first down and it's gonna be first and goal, I believe. You call it a first and goal? Yeah, I think they, oh, can, I think they can get short. a first yeah. down, but not by much. We can see Pilkington some one-on-one -on -one down here as we've seen the last couple weeks. They like to fade if they need to throw it. Gain of about 13 on the play. Boy, he's all by himself out on an island up top of the screen there. That's their marquee player this year is Ross Pilkington, number three. Slant pass. Man in motion. Option right. Pitch and knocked out of bounds before he can get to the end zone for Loveland is Brock Knorr. And he's driven out of bounds by Chris Hunley, the cornerback for Thompson Valley. Boy, he did a nice job, didn't he, coming off that block? Made the tackle one on one. That's uh, what you like to see. Cornerbacks got to come up and help out in the running game. And Hunley, it's uh, 6'1 and 166 pounds, can certainly do the job up there. Brock Knorr, by the way, at 5'6, 165, not your prototypical fullback. And I do see for Loveland that Jared Ridenauer is in there, and he was uh, not 100% definitely coming into this football game. As on second down, they're stopped short of the goal line once again. Let's see how far short. Yeah, they're going to measure. It's going to be close to a first down, and you're right, they're going to bring out the sticks. Well, they do that, we'll take a moment to let you know uh, when you can watch this game in case you just tuned in and missed the first series of the ball game, which was one play. Thompson Valley turning it over, an interception on first down. You can see our broadcast Saturdays on twice a day on Saturdays at uh, 9 a.m. and 7 p.m., Sundays at 10 a.m. and Monday at 5. That, of course, the coaches show with Chris Degnan as your host, and you'll get all the insight from both Coach Poovey and uh, Coach Jones from Thompson Valley as they are a little short, it looks like. So third down and less than a yard coming up. And, uh, of course, Jeff and I follow with the football game, the one you've been waiting for out in the half hour. Oh, it's a great matchup. There's it's a beautiful night tonight, great crowd. Boy, oh, boy, they the, had the had the darn uh, tailgate party going out in that lot. Yeah, that barbecue to... smelled awfully oh, good. Oh, man. Of course, we had primetime pizza, so we didn't miss it that much. Set to go now, third and one from about the one and a half. And into the end zone, it looks like for a touchdown for Loveland. And now a penalty flag flies. That's late in the ball game. I didn't even see who scored the touchdown. It happened so fast. It I'd have to guess back. it'd be Ridenauer or yeah. Knorr. I don't know who's That's who typically up. lines up there. If we've got it on replay, we'll... Uh, See what uh, who it was. Meantime, we've got the penalty coming up. It's a personal foul against Thompson Valley. The touchdown will stand, and we do have the replay. Let's see if we can pick it up. Still didn't pick it up. Let's see who got up. <laughs> uh, good question. Maybe Paul Keeney, our statistician, can tell us who scored. It was 40. Ball, Jared Rittenauer. Personal Thank foul. You, Paul. Late hit in the end zone on the defense. Touchdown. So the touchdown stands, Jeff, and Paul Keeney comes through for us, our statistician. Let Rid us I know. spoke to Ridnour before the game, and he said he was not 100% healthy after that shoulder injury two weeks ago. In fact, he said he was only 50% healthy, and uh, it's nice to see the young man punch it in there. They ran a fake here, Andy. Fake and the throw and catch. That's Brock Knorr for a two-point conversion, and Loveland is on top, eight to nothing. Well, you know, Loveland struggled, as we've seen the last few weeks anyways on their PAT point after touchdown team and so you just can't in this in this event this game more than any other of the season uh, coaches pull out all the tricks as you just seen and, and uh, you had to kind of think that the Indians were going to rely on some trickery because their PAT team had been struggling recently so huh. that eight is big that gets you the extra two 10:42 to play in the first quarter less than two minutes gone and the Indians are on top we mentioned the barbecue out in the parking lot, but if uh, it's getting a little chilly to barbecue in your backyard, why don't you get yourself some primetime pizza? They're our sponsor here at Comcast this year, and they provide us with some dinner before every game for the whole crew, and that's a wonderful thing because we love it. If you haven't tried them, give them a call, 667-7099. Let them know you saw the broadcast here on Comcast, and they will give you a free bottle, two-liter bottle of your favorite soda. 
It's great pizza. Give them a chance. 667-7099. And now let's real quick take a look at the Loveland scoring drive. Wasn't a long one, was it? No, four plays, Andy. Total yards of 24 following the interception by Gephardt. And it was uh, punched in by number 40, Ridnow. Loveland to kick off. Again, a low line drive kick. And this one is going to be fielded by Shane Plews. And he's running sideways and going nowhere. He's dropped inside the 20-yard line. And that's where the Eagle offense will start their second possession of the football game. Taking over, it looks like they're going to spot the ball at about right on the 20-yard line. So first and 10 from there for Clint Miller in the offense. They've run one play, and it wasn't a good one. We'll see. We'll just, look, just see what kind of uh, uh, game planning is may or may not change with, with uh, the Thompson Valley coaching staff following that interception. That's a, that's a real... Uh, well, first and 10 for Clint Miller in the offense. Eye formation behind him. Sends a man in motion. Thompson Valley runs the football and absolutely nothing doing. Is swarmed under four yards behind the line of scrimmage that time is Josh still on. And not much doing there. They're actually going to give him forward progress to four yards behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 14. And uh, Loveland uh, has dominated this series over the years. You can see... The Eagles have got to win 10 in a row to even it up. They'd like to start with one tonight, but they trail eight to nothing. Definitely one-sided over the last 25 years, but uh, we'll see. It's still early tonight. Long way to go. Still not, now we're two minutes into the football game. Oh, uh, look at the old I formation, the triple I. That back guy's way back there. Gets a nice hole and that's still on. Back over the original line of scrimmage and a few more out to the 21, 22 yard line. Third down and eight coming up, and that's an interesting forma formation, Jeff. I haven't seen that one out of Thompson Valley this year. Well, one of the negatives of it is your, your tailback is nine yards off the line of scrimmage, so literally he has to go ten yards to gain one positive yard. So. But they did a nice job, picked up four or five or six there. I noticed that the first two guys coming off that eye acted like fullbacks and took care of a block up there and did open a hole for him. He gained six yards on the play. Third and eight, Miller to throw. Crossing route is complete, but short of the first down. The receiver that time is Zeb Shockley. And he's out to the 28 yard line. So the completed pass net six, but it's still fourth down and two. And yeah. Clint Miller will drop back to punt. Here comes the punt, you bet. And all that Loveland gets to do, fortunately for them, is put a guy named Ross Bilkington in the return spot. That is Bilkington back standing at his own 35 yard line. Low snap to Miller, but he gets the kick away. Angles it for the near side away from Pilkington. There's a smart move, but it's fielded by Gebhardt right at about the 42-yard line. He's dropped right there as a number, couple of Thompson Valley Eagles in on the tackle were Wes Fisbeck and number 50, or 59, Chris Webb. They drop him in his tracks, and Loveland takes over their second possession at the 43-yard line, but that's not what Thompson Valley needed to do. They went three and out after turning the ball over on their first possession, and Loveland gets pretty good field position. There's our replay times. You don't want to miss that coach's show. Chris Degnan will get the skinny from Coach Poovy and Coach Jones about this game and also next week's games. The skinny? Yep. That's an old saying, <laughs> but it's a good one. First and ten for Corey Hogue. Uh -oh. Fumbles the football, bounces right back to him, and he gains about six yards going right up the middle. Sometimes that happens with a broken play. Better to be lucky than good. Sometimes it is. Oak dropped that one right from center. You'll see it here. He dribbled it right back up into his hands. Look at that. Just like he played for the Nuggets. Darn right. Second down and five now as they give him a gain of about five on the play. Reminder, next week we've got uh, Northland in town to play these Loveland Indians, and our final game of the season will feature the Thompson Valley Eagles and the Rocky Mountain Lobos. Second and five, Hoke straight drop. Pitch over the middle and caught, and it looks like he is going to go all the way. A touchdown. Boy, 51 yards that time, and the receiver is Jeremy Bloom, the 5'8", 145-pound junior on the receiving end of a pretty good Corey Hoke pass. He got this one right on the money. Boy, and he turned on the afterburners here. Watch him pull away. Well, he's working against the safety, uh, Matt Rusticki that time, and... Uh, Jeremy Bloom is gone to the races. A 51-yard touchdown toss and a big play puts Thompson Valley in a bigger hole. That's a quick strike, isn't it, Andy? Going for two here again. 
Going for two. No, even not even a fake this time. Is on up straight in formation. Passes to Pilkington. Did he get in? Oh, he did. He leaned, leaned in. Boy, he got his uh, actually the tackle might have forced in. him in. As uh, Ross Pilkington at 176 pounds was able to muscle his way into the end zone, and it's 16 to nothing. They've made a living out of the slant this year. We had two guys on him, and I think he was actually snuck in the end zone before that last player got there. Wow, it's happening fast tonight. Well, we've only played four minutes and seven seconds, and Loveland has put up two touchdowns, and they lead it 16 to nothing against their crosstown rivals, the Thompson Valley Eagles, and the boy, the, the home team in black here has got to be a bit shell-shocked right now. Well, you know, we noticed that they didn't even use the field, Ray Patterson Field, for their warm-ups tonight. They came out of the locker rooms over at the school and kind of lapped around the parking lot, getting their motors running, and then they came on the field and um, waited for their crash poster to come to the sideline and stuff like that. I, they did not warm up on the field at all. Interesting note. Something to remember for sure. As the kick this time is a little better one, it's high and bounces. And will it make it in the end zone? It won't. It dies at the one-yard line. And poor Ryan Molesworth has to pick it up and run, and he's drilled and dropped at the four-yard line. Boy, you had to think that was going to bounce in the end zone when he couldn't clean, field it cleanly. You, you were thinking right away, oh, he's making the right place. and going to let that thing roll in the end zone, but it just wouldn't do it for him. Well, that ball's not round like your sport was. <laughs> and so it does take some funny bounces. Take a look at the Loveland scoring drive while the Eagles set up for offense here, and it's another quick one. Let's leave it up there about as long as it lasted. Okay, that's it. Two plays and 56 yards. That's a great point. That's the end of that as Clint Miller brings the offense out again. Again, three men in the backfield Inverted behind Inverted wishbone, him. Andy. You don't see that very often either. A little bit of delaying tactic as they finally give it to somebody. And so... Hard to see who, I think it was Josh Salon. He gets, oh, not much. They marked the ball at the five yard line originally, and now it's just over the five yard line. So let's call it second and 10 still. As he didn't even get dull, but maybe six inches on that play. The Loveland defense has got to be fired up at this point. They got a 16 to nothing lead. They oh, can go whole hog right now. The momentum is all on the Indian side. Here you go with your triple eye again. That tailback's awful deep. He's five yards into the end zone. They give it to the third man. And again, nothing doing in the middle of that Loveland defensive front. That time it was uh, Todd Olander with the ball. With the ball. And now Zeb Shockley checks him. He's bringing the play in, and Derek Olson trots off for the Thompson Valley Eagles. Third and long, and certainly got to be very, very concerned about the Thompson Valley psyche here. Uh, this is a dangerous, dangerous spot. They would desperately like a first down here but it is third and ten from their own five Miller quick drop got a nice block but the pass is incomplete wouldn't have gotten a first down anyways there were four Loveland Indians around the intended receiver that time and Miller's gonna have to stand back on the back of his own end zone and punt this one away on this quick slant here to the wide receiver the ball is thrown into the ground here but it's probably a great choice by the quarterback simply because they were not going to get the first down. And we also see a flag now on the field. Andy, any idea what that is? Uh, they had to come in awfully late because I sure yeah. didn't see it on the play. We had a late flag come in earlier. Good time to introduce our officials to you tonight. Yep. If you Robert, see any of them, give them a hand. It's a tough job they do out there. Or some they pizza. They don't get paid all that well. Or some pizza. Yeah, we could give them some plenty. pizza. Yeah. And that prime time. Sports pizza. like against Thompson Valley, so now Miller's really going to be backed up. Yeah, that's their second one, Andy, and that's, that's again, worst-case scenario for the Eagles. You can't do this against a lo good Loveland team. Now, you don't want to give uh, the other guys any kind of break if you can help it. As they back it up, it only costs them two and a half yards. But After the play, dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense, half the distance to the goal, fourth down. I wonder if that's verbal unsportsmanlike or if there's some roughhousing going on like there was the previous time. Well, it's hard to tell. You know yeah. everybody's fired up for this game. So maybe emotions running a little high right now as Miller is in punt formation. Good snap. Miller's kick is high, not very deep as Pilkington fields it at the 41-yard line. Near side. He's got some room to go. He is down the sidelines, and nobody's going to touch him. No flags. This is a touchdown, a 41-yard punt return for Ross Pilkington. 
And it seems like every year, Loveland has got somebody on special teams that is a threat to take it all the way every time he touches the football. This time it's Ross Pilkington. Well, I hope people really appreciate how special an athlete this young man is. Thompson Valley's kicker does a nice job of punting this thing out. And, and Loveland sets up a beautiful wall. You can see the picket fence get started there. And Ross just, well, he's got a lot of God-given talent there as he jets into the end zone. 6.26 still to play in the first quarter. And yeah, as you said, Miller made a pretty good punt. That was almost a 40-yard kick from his own two and a half fielded by Pilkington at about the 41 and a half. So 38-yard punt. And they're going for two once again. Trying to the far side this time and incomplete the intended receiver on that one. Just a bit too short for Aaron Kubasta at 5'8". He needed to be about 6'8 to catch that one. Well, that's the worst thing that's happened in the first six minutes of this game for the Loveland Indians as they missed the two-point conversion. Ran a little pick play there with the double wideout situation. And I'm sure that Coach Poovy is extremely ecstatic about a 22 to zip lead here. And the Eagles are trying to regroup. Well, they haven't had much time on the sidelines to talk about how to regroup as uh, they just finished punting the football, and Loveland takes it back for a touchdown. Ross Pilkington, and as you mentioned, he had a great uh, return set up that time as he had a good wall on this side. And uh, even better news for Loveland, no block in the back. There was one that looked close to me, but uh, the ref referees certainly make the right call. Ross. Yeah, I saw the same one I think you were looking at. Yeah. I was over here, and he just got the shoulder pads around front to make yeah. it a legal block. Boy, that's what you always wonder when somebody takes one wide like that, though. Is you know, somebody's got one in the back. As we were coming upstairs, Andy, I noticed there was a long line of people trying to get in. If they were late getting in, they may have missed a lot. Well, they may have, but they can watch the replay here on Comcast. This one's fielded not quite cleanly, but at least further up in the field and coming to the near side and running out of room for Thompson Valley is Andrew Greer who has also played some defensive back, and now another flag comes in late. I don't know where that one came from. One of the Thompson Valley players was talking to the official, and then the flag came out. That was Justin Williams' center. The 245-pound senior was talking to our referee. He seemed a bit exasperated. I don't think he's going to like the announcement we're about to get. Yeah. Well, you hate to see that, especially after the play when Thompson Valley finally had decent field position. They're now going to be backed up inside their own 15-yard line. Well, actually, they're going to be back at about the 17. Eh, I call it the 18 as the ball's right now at the 33. I can add, you know. Look at the penalty numbers so far. Thompson Valley penalized three personal foul penalties. Of course, Dead ball foul. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the receiving team. First and 10. I think that 15 yards has got to be a little bit not quite right because that one's 15 and the first two were about two and a half and I don't know what they gave him on the other one. Now we got a timeout called by Thompson Valley as the coaching staff will come out and try and settle down this group that finds themselves in a three touchdown hole next week. Loveland, they're going to be trying to carry over this game. Well, as we see what they can do against the North Glen North. Excuse me, Andy, but as we're starting in the pregame, we've got a graphic somewhere where the Norse are going to come up into this stadium here against Loveland. And our graphic, it was included and referred to the uh, playoff points. Loveland really cannot afford another loss, in my opinion, as they're at the lower end of the playoff system right now. Um, uh, so this could be a huge one next week. Could be a big game. We'll have it for you right here on Comcast. Of course, Saturdays at 9 a.m. and 7 p.m., Sundays at 10 a.m., Mondays at 5. And... Uh, that, of course, Chris Degnan with the coaches show. He called this the game we've all been waiting for. And if you're a Loveland fan, hey, couldn't be more happy if you're a Thompson Valley fan. You're wondering what the heck's going on right now. Yeah, it was well worth the wait for the Loveland Indians. But again, the Thompson Valley Eagles are yet to really keep the pressure off. We've got to spread this offense out. There we go. Look at this. We're going to get three wides one way. That'll pull some of those blitzing linebackers out of the, out of the box. Loveland still has seven guys up along the line of scrimmage. They're playing single coverage outside, the inside handoff, and the seven front seven for Loveland there does the job, dropping them for about a one-yard loss. I think it was Stallone again, the ball carrier, number 41. You know, that loss last week to the Fort Collins Lampkins suffered here on Ray Patterson Field by the Loveland Indians. Might have been the best tonic they could have had at the time, and certainly the preparation week for this uh, Crosstown rivalry again three in the backfield only one man wide so Loveland's getting 10 guys bunched up around that line of scrimmage and nothing doing is uh, still on or excuse me it wasn't still on they gave it to one of the up men that time and that's uh, Aaron Pouchon 
who gets not much out to the 20-yard line just across. It'll be third down and eight coming up. And of course, if you missed that game last week uh, here on Comcast, Fort Collins put on an impressive performance in the fourth quarter, a more than seven-minute drive, 15 plays to get the go-ahead touchdown and leave Loveland less than a couple of minutes. Loveland made it close. They, they got down to where they had a shot, but Fort Collins hung on to win. And if you did miss that game, well, you can purchase a copy of it, and we'll tell you how in just a moment. Of course, you can get a copy of this game, too, if you want. You can get a copy of any of the games we've done this season. Now Clint Miller sends Pouchon into the slot, and the whistles blow. I think they took too much time. Yeah, clearly they did. It sometimes happens when your quarterback has to go back and uh, tell folks that hey, you're in the wrong spot. Delay a game, yeah. offense, five-yard penalty, third down. And Miller's in charge of the whole thing, but young man uh, Puchin should have known where to line up and just needed some guidance. Boy, it's just a killer. You go from third and eight to now you got third and 15, third and 14, and boy, the percentages of the chance of getting that done dropped dramatically down in this area of the field, too, because you'd think the field was tilted this way in the wow. Loveland favor. Ball's only been on the Loveland side of the midfield stripe once, and it didn't take Loveland long to get back across. Miller, inside oh. handoff, double handoff. This That's is Ryan Molesworth, and he's fighting and clawing, and he has a first down, and that second effort from Ryan Molesworth as he was hit about two yards shy of that first down stick, and he managed to get out to the 29-yard line. Good play call here by Chris Jones as Loveland is pursuing, and whoops, here we're coming back this way. Yeah, he was hit at the 25-yard line, Jeff, and he muscled his way out to the 29 and a first down for the six-foot, 165-pound junior. That's a neat little trick play, wasn't it? Uh, you got to like a play like that because you actually make the handoff. It's it's not a fake to the Is running it? back. You actually hand it to him, and then he gives it to somebody else going the other direction. A forward handoff behind the line of scrimmage. A little stuff it into the running back play. Still on, trying to get to the outside, Ooh. avoids one man and is just stuck by a couple of Loveland Indians right at the line of scrimmage. He in got swallowed the, up, didn't he? In on the tackle for uh, Loveland that time, we're number 24, that's Nathan Warren. We called his name a few times. And Jacob Sauer looked to be in on the tackle as well, number eight, the linebacker. And uh, still on, nothing doing, loses a yard on the play. And early in the season for Thompson Valley, this was a big problem for him. They could not run the football. And in those early games, they went to the air with Chris Miller or Clint Miller, but they really haven't had a chance to do that because they've been backed up so far in their own territory. That's true here tonight. Tight formation now. Fake the reverse the after they the give ground, it inside. And I, it's a fumble. Is that a fumble? And Loveland has it. I thought I saw a flag coming out, but it was the beanbag to mark the fumble. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, things are going from bad to worse for the Thompson Valley Eagles as another turnover gives Loveland great field position. They dive into the tailback, and I don't know if he ever even had control, Andy. Might have just bounced off the pads and hit the turf. It looked like Stallon was the ball carrier. Not 100% sure about that. So, Josh, if uh, you're watching and it wasn't you, I forgive me. Well, I would watch, I, right now I'd watch for Coach Poovey to try to strike one in big time in a hurry. Got the spread field. There's Pitches a lane to again. Ames. They ran this play on the first play of the football game, and Ames got good yardage. This time he's dropped inside the 10-yard line. Flags fly, and uh, looks, Jeff, you think I, it's going to be against Loveland? It's coming huh? back, yeah. The wide receiver pushed the defensive back in the corner of the end, near the end zone there in the back, and it's going to come back. Boy, We've got a replay. Thompson Valley catches its first break as uh, he certain, Ames certainly didn't need the it comes real late here on the corner. Oh, that looked, In fact, you know what? Could have been either of them. I think it was Pilkington, Andy. I don't. Uh, the camera didn't show it on the replay, but I was watching on the perimeter, and I think it was Pilkington. Uh, this is a good, good thing for the Thompson Bell. This will slow oh, yeah. that momentum down a little bit. Just a little, and uh, two flags came in, and, and like you said, Pilkington looked like he got one, and it looked like another Indian got one as well. This they can only take one, however, but that'll back them up to at least the 20-yard line. Sometimes those referees, when one of their colleagues throw the flag, the other one throws it to make it look more official. I'm During not kidding. the run, clipping on the offense, repeat first down. And I think that was a good call. I didn't mean to imply it was a bad call, that's for sure. I think you're exactly right. Makes it first down and seven as they gain three yards on the penalty. 
Yeah, I always find Good that point. a little strange. That is. Corey Hoke sends Aaron Kubasta in motion. He fakes the pass and takes it right up the middle. He's finally tripped up by the ankle. And making the tackle for Thompson Valley that time was Chris Wright, number 68, who himself was buried on the ground, and he, I think he just had shoestrings that time. Going to be a first down, I believe, gentlemen. It is. As our referee is signaling first down, and they move the chains. So with 3.37 to go in the first quarter, Loveland looking for its fourth touchdown, and they're in range inside the 15-yard line. What an explosive start for the Indians. Explosive. Well, we promised we'd give you the address to write to if you'd like a copy of this game or any of the games we've had this season, and we'll do that here shortly. That's Brennan Ames in motion. Pitch to the far side to Kubasta. I think he had an option to throw or run. Too much room, so he decides to run with it, and he's driven out of bounds near the first down. I think he's about a yard short just outside the five-yard line. Boy, they're so quick to the perimeter, Andy. They really are. I mean, they're outrunning the Eagles at this point. Loveland has always been blessed with some speed in that backfield. At least as long as I've been watching them. I agree. Boy, let's take a look at uh, where teams have started tonight. You can see Loveland with a huge advantage starting at the Thompson Valley 35. You're almost in field goal range to start with. And Thompson Valley, meanwhile, starting just outside their own 10. Handoff left side on second down. It'll be first and goal as he's tripped up just shy of the end zone. Trying to catch who the ball carrier was that time. It was the fullback. I didn't see his number, though. Let's see if it was Ridenow or maybe uh, Brock Knorr. Well, Knorr wasn't in the football game, so it wasn't him. He just came in from the sideline. Looks like it might have been Ridenow. He's still lined up there. Ooh, An inside nice. handoff and just drilled by Ben Prather. What a play. Ooh. That's the best play for Thompson Valley tonight as Ridenauer tried the right side and Ben Prather just smacks him. Well, that's like they do it on Sundays, boy. That's really impressive. Timed it right, coming over the top of those defense and offense linemen and chested him up. Well, Prather, 202 pounds and six foot two. He's just a junior. Thompson Valley would be glad to have him back next year. That's a good look. Ridenauer at 5'7", 181. Doesn't find a whole lot of guys a whole lot bigger than he is, but uh, paid for it that time. This time, however, Loveland gets into the end zone and Ridenauer makes up for the last play by taking it over to the left side for his second one-yard touchdown run of the football game with 2.04 to play in the first quarter. Ten minutes into the football game almost, and Loveland's put up four touchdowns. That's really impressive. Some of it's due to the Thompson Valley mistakes, needless to say, but uh, it looks like John Poovey and his staff uh, did a fantastic job of getting these boys ready for the big crosstown game. Again, they've uh, chosen to go for a two-point play. Watch for the toss sweep here. Well, you'd mentioned they'd had some trouble with their kicking game, so they were elected to go for two every time here. Hogue to throw, broken up nicely by Andrew Greer, the intended receiver that time was uh, Brock Knorr, and the two-point conversion fails, and we're up to 28 nothing, just as if you'd done it the old-fashioned way and kick four extra points. Nice play by the defensive back to reach around Mr. Pilkington there, but like you said, it is 28 to nothing, and we're not even out of the first quarter here. Two minutes and four seconds to play in the first. Thompson Valley has got to string something together offensively. Their defense has been out there an awful lot. They have yet to get a, well, they have one first down on that double handoff where Ryan Molesworth bowled, bowled his way to the first down marker, but uh, that's about all they've done offensively. As Loveland gets set to kick it away one more time, they send Molesworth, and who else is back there? Looks like Brandon Horton. Well, the kickoff team's going to get tired. That's a lot of running. That's the fifth time, isn't it? I think so. Actually, it looks like Molesworth and Shane Plews are deep. Molesworth's on the near side of the field, and Plews to the far. And we're set to kick. There's the run. Another low-line drive, fielded by, well, tried to field by one of the up men, and then Shane Plews picks it up. Had a little bit of a hole and gets out across the 30-yard line, so Thompson Valley with pretty good field position. While the offense comes out, let's take a look at that Loveland scoring drive after the turnover. Not a long one again, only 25 yards, Jeff, and uh, Thompson Valley can't keep giving Loveland a short field. They've turned it over twice in their own territory, and it's led to two Loveland touchdowns. Ironically, both of them ridden our runs. Yeah, it really is a game of geography. And 
lot of high school teams can't go 80 yards, 75 yards in, uh, in drives, but a lot of teams can go 25 yards. Thompson Valley needs to go 68 right now. They have it first and 10. Oh. Well, now they need to go 70 as dropped in the backfield. Boy, you can't even get a chance to pick out the number for Thompson Valley. It was Josh still on the ball carry, but that front seven for Loveland is just swarming to the football, and they are not giving ground along that line of scrimmage. They are penetrating almost unabated to the quarterback. That's really impressive. Well, uh, Coach Poovey said in the coaches' show that uh, this is the first time in a while or that they were going to be undersized this week against Thompson Valley, and if they're undersized, uh, I'm not uh, seeing it right now as they are dominating the line of scrimmage. They sure are. Miller fakes, looks to throw. He's under pressure, and Todd Olander makes the catch out at about the 35-yard line, so it'll be third down and eight as they gain five on the play. But when you lose three yards on a first down run, that five yards on second down doesn't seem so good. But that is a nice football play, well-designed, well-schemed, little play-action pass, and they hit him in the flat. And Olander's a big guy, so you're hoping he can break some tackles out there. The uh, tight end for Thompson Valley, 6'4", 221 pounds. He's a senior. Now Thompson Valley sends three wides to the right. Pushan is the near slot. Quick count, Miller to throw, straight drop. Over the middle and intercepted by Loveland. Boy, oh boy, Thompson Valley turns it over for the third time today and still with the football is Nathan Swanson as uh, he's finally clobbered and dragged down, but not until he gets back to the 45 yard. He was just dragging people, and then he got drilled. He ran 40 yards east-west. With people draped all over him. <laughs> Take a look at it here. Miller has a man open. Aaron Pouchon is open downfield, but he underthrows him. That's exactly right, Andy. It was underthrown. A, a stronger arm would have gotten it there. You know, I saw uh, number 23 here, our man, Mr. Swanson, during pregame warm-ups. And let me tell you, he was chomping at the bit, ready to play. And the man who finally hit him hard was uh, Josh Stillon, the running back for Thompson Valley. But boy, oh boy, Thompson Valley turns it over again. Loveland's in business at the Thompson Valley 45 with 25 seconds left in the first quarter. Hope to throw. Steps up, going deep. He's got a man out, uh, and it's intercepted by Thompson Valley's Andrew Greer. Pilkington was the nearest man to it for Loveland. But that ball was way overthrown by Corey Hogue. Yeah, the previous play, Thompson Valley underthrows it. And on this play, it, you wouldn't think a guy could overthrow a guy like Pilkington. <laughs> that, but that Mr. Hogue, long. that shows you, that's a, that takes a load. And uh, Mr. Pilkington kept on running, but he just couldn't catch up. Well, Hogue bought himself some time, stepped Spikes, up and yeah. through, and he just was, wow. Uh, you can't even see Pilkington in the picture, and Andrew Greer made a nice catch, and there's the turnover numbers, four turnovers, and we're still in the first quarter. It is, uh, it's been played on the right side of the field, that's for sure. Yeah, how come you can see, and I gotta keep yeah. looking around the, the window here. <laughs> Thompson Valley, the good news is they have the football back. The bad news is they're inside their own 10 again at the eight yard line. Miller with 18 seconds to work with in the first quarter. Uh-oh. Drop the football, it's loose. We'll have to see who picked it up. Did not look like Miller got back on it. Thompson Valley's got it. Loveland's not excited enough to think they had it. And maybe Miller did get back down and pick that one up off the turf. Loss of three. And like you said, loss of three. They're you can't snaps. do that on first down. Yeah, you're just wasting snaps. I mean, I know the young man doesn't do it on purpose, but it's, it's just got to make the coaching staff sick to their stomachs here. Well, and they haven't had much success trying anything else on first down either. That, however, is the end of the first quarter of play here at Ray Patterson Field and the game you've been waiting for, the crosstown rivalry between Loveland and Thompson Valley and the visiting Indians on top 28 to nothing. And as usual, at the end of the first quarter, we've got our trivia question for you, our Comcast trivia question. Here it is. Now, this is a pretty good picture. He was cut from his grade school team the first time he tried out, but he was so determined to be a member of the team that he made himself the water boy. Eventually, he led the team to two city championships. Oh, well, it's not that guy from the Disney movie, is it? Adam Sandler? Oh, doesn't look like him. Boy, I'm trying to. Well, we'll see if we can figure out who it is. We need some clues from the truck. <laughs> you got a stump here in the booth. And for you folks at home, we'll have the answer for you between the third and fourth quarters, so stay tuned. 
We're ready for the second quarter of action on the Comcast Game of the Week, sponsored by Primetime Pizza. In case you're just joining us, it's 28 to nothing, Loveland. Four touchdowns in the first quarter. Two the result of Thompson Valley turnovers, and the Eagles have turned it over three times. They took one back just moments ago. However, they're backed up to their own five-yard line after Greer's interception and a fumble on the first down snap that they recovered but lost three. Now they're down near their own fans, however. That might be a help as the student section is down here. Flags fly, and they whistle the play dead. Don't know who moved first. Loveland was bringing all three backers right up the gut, so they might have stepped in the neutral zone, but I'm not so sure. I have to wait and see. This is a tough call. It's a long count from Clint Miller. And you're right, Loveland looked like they were bringing the kitchen sink. Now, well, they scared the Eagle offensive line into flinching. Well, That'll cost the Eagles two and a half more yards. And boy, I hope uh, maybe Paul Keeney can get us some numbers Dead here. Dead ball foul. False start on the offense, half the distance to the goal, still second down. Well, it's really, I'm sorry, India, but it's really asking a lot for those old linemen to sit in those stances while those linebackers are creeping up because they're getting anxious to block some gaps. Five penalties for 28 yards now against the Eagles. Boy, he was lucky to get out of the end. Yeah, he, he was uh, very lucky that time. Well, again, he's the third, third guy in that I formation. That's way back in that end zone. We got 14 plays. We got a graphic coming your way. 14 plays on both sides of the ball here for the Indians and the Eagles, uh, which looks like the game may be sort of even, but it's anything but as it's 28 to nothing. Well, we mentioned that stat of 28 yards and penalties, but Paul was uh, waving at me saying that three of those penalties only amounted to two and a half yards because right. they were inside their own five. Yeah, those now half, the, the, half the distance penalties. When you're deep in your own territory, now it's third down and about 17 yards, but worse yet, you're at the one yard line and Clint Miller wants a timeout. He's going to talk it over. You know, something you don't see very often, Andy, is when those offensive linemen, their feet are actually in the end zone. It's uh, it's strange geography down there, and that does make them very nervous because they've got to push the line of scrimmage the other way. Probably a good time out here by the young quarterback to get uh, a little more composure and find out exactly what his coaches, from his coaches, what they want him to do. Big play here. You at least want to get enough room to punt. You certainly don't want to give up the safety if you can avoid it. While they talk it over, we want to remind you that in most high school sports, you could take away the cheerleaders, you could take away the bands, you could even take away the fans, and you could still play the game. But if you take away the rules, you will take away the very things that make a game worth playing. Because if you're not going to play by the rules, why play at all? Message from Comcast Communications and the Colorado High School Activities Association. Well, we saw there that the Thompson Valley cheerleaders are still fired up. Another reminder, if you're hungry, and uh, Loveland appears to have been hungry the entire first quarter, Give Primetime Pizza a call. They're our sponsor here at Comcast, 667-7099. That's the number on your screen. Mention you saw the ad here on Comcast. to give you a free two-liter bottle of your favorite pop. And uh, if you haven't had their pizza, boy, give them a shot because it's good stuff. We have it before the game every day. And like we mentioned, there was a barbecue going on in the parking lot. And heck, we didn't even care. We had Primetime Pizza. Thompson Valley, again, with that triple I, and the back man's almost out of the end zone. And that's where you have, as a defensive player, you got to think about keying the fullback there because the odds of them handing it to that guy seven, eight yards deep in the end zone are really kind of slim. Now you give it to the fullback, and he gets uh, at least a semblance of breathing room for Clint Miller to punt, although you can see he looks like he's playing goalie for the soccer team back there. Yeah, it does. Now well, he's moved off. Loveland's going to set up a return here, Andy. As you can see, there's two split tandem backs on the return. Oh, they block, kick is blocked. They came right up the middle and it goes out of the end zone. It'll be a safety. I can't, I'm trying to pick up who blocked it. I think it was number 32 for the Loveland Indians and that would be uh, Zach, uh, Zach Smith. And let's see if we can pick up who blocks it. It comes right up the middle, Jeff. Oh yeah, he did. The defensive tackle split the guard and the tackle seam and the personnel protector really never even touched him. What a nice play. You gotta get some help there. I believe it was Zach Smith who got the block that time, but the safety makes it 30 to nothing in favor of the Loveland Indians. And worse than that, guess what? Thompson Valley has to give him the football again. Yeah, Loveland's gonna get the ball. They'll kick off from the 20. This is something you don't see very often in high school football or at any level for that matter. Thompson Valley will be forced to 
kind of like salt in the wounds here. They'll be forced to kick from their own 20 yard line. They do have the option to punt the ball or to use a kicking tee and we'll wait to see what uh, the Eagles choose to do. Uh, obviously, Loveland will Depends move on up. Who you think got the best leg. Right, if, whether you're looking <laughs> for hang time or whether you're looking for a distance shot, you bet, you bet. Well, three men deep for the Loveland Indians and there is a 10, 20, 30 yard gap between the second line of it. Now they're backing up. Yeah, and those, those deep backs for the Indians, they surely can move up. They don't need to be that far back. Brandon Horton will kick it off a tee from the near hash mark. We've got to give them credit. The Eagle fans are still excited. Cheerleaders are still cheering away. That's because they saw that primetime pizza. Oh, you, you think they're, they're waiting for their order, huh? Horton's kick is a low line drive and fielded at the 43-yard line of Thompson Valley. I don't know if he just shanked that. Well, that's a good question. If you did it on purpose. I don't think it's a live football. It's not like a kickoff, is it? Indeed it is, though, Andy. It's oh. exactly like a live football. Maybe Once it was it an onside ten, kick. You think they would have tried an onside kick from their own 20? Boy, you, you wouldn't think so, but you never well, can tell. You're no. down 30 to nothing. What do you got to lose? And you can pick your poison of kicking it off to Ross Bilkington, too. And we've already so, seen what he can do. You betcha. Short field again for Loveland as they take over at the 42-yard line of Thompson Valley. Watch the corner down here on Pilkington. He's pressing them. Ames in motion. He gets the handoff and is dropped right at the line of scrimmage. Number 42 for Thompson Dowley made the stop that time. Good tackle in the interior by Calvin Felker. 6'2", 218-pound sophomore. Looks good on that play. By the time he gets to be a senior, he could be a standout here at Thompson Dowley. Well, if you can get some sophomores on the field in a game like this, it sure does teach them a lot about uh, this kind of game. But at the same time, this is a game of about seniors, actually. Sure. But... Uh, Boy, it sure makes it better next year when you come in to play this game, haven't done it once before. Corey Hogue under center, spread field again for the Indian offense. Quick throw, that's Brock Knorr. Got not much of a block from Pilkington and is drilled and dropped at the 36 yard line. Matt Rusticki made the tackle that time, but it's a gain of about six yards on the play. I'll call it five as they're gonna spot him down at the 40, or excuse me, the 37. Chris Hundley, the defensive back out here on the corner did a nice job got off of Pilkington's block and turned to play inside, forcing Knorr to be uh, short-fielded, as they say, and allow the inside people to pursue him. Strong safety, Matt Rusticki on the stop. Good name for safety, Rusticki. Yeah. Put a sticky on you. <laughs> no, you're not. Not a sticky note either. <laughs> Shoulder pad to number hit. Squared up and dropped in that time. Hold under off. pressure. There ben Prather forces him to stay back and throw the football, and it's incomplete out of bounds. Pilkington was the receiver, but he was out of bounds. Andrew Greer on the coverage, and it was pretty good coverage. And I looked back to see if there was a flag because it looked like Corey Hoke may have gotten past the line of scrimmage, but no hanky on the field. Well, it's a 36-and-a-half yard line. We can check it on the replay whether he crossed the uh, line of scrimmage. And I don't think he did. Nope. That's a nice call. I'd like to see if we can get – well, I don't know. That's tough to tell. A receiver of Pilkington stature, he knows how to do that little toe dance near the uh, out of bounds markers and out on the sideline and get one foot down in high school, and it's a good catch. Apparently, he didn't. Now the officials are in position to make the call. We're all the way across the field. We still had a better view. <laughs> That's true, because we've got an excellent camera crew. We got the replay. You bet. And we got the advantage of slow mo. Second or fourth down and five now. Thompson Valley's blitzing. Oh. The pass is incomplete. Intended for Aaron Kubasta, and he short-armed that one. He's got to go up and catch that football. And Thompson Valley's defense finally gives him a spark as they take over on downs after the uh, short kick after the safety. I like this call by Coach Poovey. It's fourth down. You're up 30-0 in the, you know, the uh, shallowness of the second quarter. That's a good call. He trusts his defense, and Obviously, he has every reason to because Thompson Valley's having a hard time moving them out of there. Now, Thompson Valley's offense has had a tough time moving the ball. Skubasta can't come up with the catch from Corey Hogue, and the Eagles take over with 9.40 to play in the second period. We got another timeout by Thompson Valley. And that's all, of, all the ones for Thompson Valley right now. They have used up their allotment of three. Well, I think they're short a player. Could be. We promised to give you that uh, address a while back. You had your pencils waiting. Um, we'll give it to you now. 
If you'd like to own a copy of this game or if you just have a comment you'd like to send us here at uh, Comcast, that's the address you use, High School Sports, Comcast Communications, 1582 West 1st Street, Loveland, Colorado, 80537. And, of course, if you'd like to own a copy of the game, please send along a check or money order for $25 payable to Comcast. Be sure to include in that letter your name, your address, and your phone number, and let us know which football game you want. And please, if you do want a copy of the game, we do need your requests in writing. So uh, no phone calls, please. Drop us a line. It's the lost art of letter writing. Yeah, with our electronic ages. <laughs> I deal in words every day at work, so. And I don't write letters either. <laughs> By the time I'm done writing for the paper, I've had enough. Second down and nine now as Thompson Valley picks up one on the first down play. You know, it might be wise if Thompson Valley maybe keeps us on the ground a little bit to get that clock cranking up and uh, speed this game up a little bit from a sense that they can regroup maybe at halftime. Well, one thing I've been a bit surprised, well, you, maybe they're doing exactly what you say, but Thompson Valley has been, I think, only thrown on first down in that first series of oh. the ball game. Boy, nearly intercepted again. Nathan Warren nearly came up with his second pick of the ball game as uh, Wes Fizback, the intended receiver, but he had no chance to catch that one as Nathan Warren came across and uh, got in the way of that one. It's third down and well, they've actually looked like moved the stick, so let's call it eight and a half. Yeah. Better get nine, though. Shows you how much I know. Uh, talk about them running the ball, running the ball to keep the clock going. They come out and throw a three-yard dig pattern and it stops the clock because it fell incomplete. A 30 spot in the board. Man, 30 good. love in favor of the Indians. Thompson Valley trying to return serve. Look out. Clint Miller just got drilled. Hey, nice and catch. And so did the receiver, but it's a throw and catch as Thompson Valley Zeb Shockley makes the grab, and Clint Miller slow to get up as he was just hammered this time. Boy, coming off the near side untouched. Boy, and he just rocked him. But what a nice catch. Nice, nice delivery. I was so busy watching Miller get hit, I didn't see who hit... Uh, Zeb Shockley, the man who drilled uh, Clint Miller was Zach Smith, uh, the same man who we think blocked the punt. Well, here comes the punt team. It was team, a little right? unclear, and fourth down and one, and the punt team comes on, but remember, Clint Miller's the punter. So you never know if Thompson Valley might try something here. The Indians aren't quite sure they're going to kick it away, but Miller does. He angles it away from Pilkington. Kubasta lets it bounce, and it's, it takes a nice Thompson Valley roll, and... Oh, nice it stops. Play. Oh, don't touch the line. It stops at the one-yard line. There is a penalty marker down at the 19 on the near sideline. And no indication that it's a touchback, but you're right. Boy, you don't want to come sliding in there and get in the end zone before you touch that football. Absolutely right, because if he touches the line with any part of his body or the ball, it is going to come to the 20. But let's see what the penalty is. They're talking it over with, well, no, they're talking it over with each other. I thought that was one of the Eagle players there. And Clint Miller going to motioning the sidelines that we better decline this. So yeah. it looks like it's going to be against Loveland. Now they'll decline that. Had it, of course, because it's a post-possession foul. Had it been a pre-possession foul against the Indians, it would have been a first down for Thompson Valley. Well, if they take it from the spot of the flag, it'd be half the distance, which would put it around the nine. Well, guess what? It's coming back. Well, what uh, I'm not sure what exactly is happening here. You know what, Andy? I got a feeling that this is something that a lot of viewers aren't aware of. In fact, maybe indeed, and I'm not going to guess, but if this is against Loveland, it may be 15 yards from the previous spot, and the Eagles retain possession. Boy, I should have thought because nobody in college and pro, once you, once you kick it, it's post-possession. But in high school, the kick does not mean you've lost possession. And that's not what you're seeing. Fielded? Yes. And that's what you're During seeing happen. The loose ball. See the loose ball. Is the key. On the return team, 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. Jeff, you nailed it. Well, let's see, that's why I gotta go buy me a rule book now. It's something that doesn't happen again very often. And I'll be honest with you, about eight or nine years ago over at Longmont, we lost the ball game to the Skyline Falcons on the same kind of call. So Thompson Valley catches the second break of the ball game for them. It's been tough going as the pass is complete out there to Zeb Shockley, and he's uh, hit hard again. 
Looks like Greg Gebhardt in on the hit along with uh, Matthew Roberts. Boy, Gebhardt's but, having a great first half. But uh, Zeb Shockley hangs on to the football, give him credit, coming across the middle. Six foot, 175 pound senior tight end. He's hanging on to it. I suppose, and the old saying is, you might as well hang on to it because you're going to get hit anyway. And when the Loveland Indians are hitting these receivers and running backs from the Eagles, they're, the Eagles are going down. They're putting his shoulder pads on them. Good block by Aaron Pouchon that time. Now Miller's in trouble. Throws in the There's near no sideline. Flag there, comes folks. down. And rightly so, as look who's in there uh, has, harassing Clint Miller again. Here's a name we've called a few times, Zach Smith. Zachary Smith, the 199-pound senior defensive end, has been all over the field tonight. That's uh, a contest of agility, strength, skill, speed, and they're all in white shirts and red pants right now. That penalty is a uh, loss of down as well, sure I believe, is. intentional grounding. This is a double-edged sword penalty. That and, off, that and offensive oh. pass interference will cost you the down. Intentional grounding. It's the right call. On the offense. Five-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. That foul carries loss of down. Third down. Boy, that's a tough one. Well, I like the way he explains it for us, too. And uh, he, he explained it uh, the last time, but you'd already beat him to the punch on that one. And I'll be right about half the time. Look at all the DBs looking for the pass. Nice hey, call here. Halftime gets in the Hall of Fame in baseball as Josh Salon tries the right side. <laughs> that gets you in the, like, You'd be owned the Hall of Fame if yeah, if you were a 500 hitter. <laughs> Speaking of that Hall of Fame, how do you like the uh, Yankees versus the Braves matchup? Oh, well, I grew up on the East Coast as a Baltimore Orioles fan, so I can't root for the Yankees. Oh, okay. I think they've got a little more hitting than the Braves do. That's what I'm reading and hearing too. But I think the Braves may have a slight edge in the pitching department. If the Braves can get the bats going, and they didn't against the Mets, I think they got a shot to beat the Yankees. The Braves can't hit any better than they did against New York Mets. They're done. Pilkington fields it at the six yard line and avoids one tackle. Now he's out Ooh. near the 20 yard line and he's bumped out of bounds. Pretty hard, by the way, by uh, <laughs> Derek Olson. 5'9", 150 pounder on special teams, a senior for Thompson Valley. Boy, that was a nice shot, Ernest Olson. You'll remember that one. Yeah, Pilkington coming right up the sideline. Let's take a look at the standings quickly. You can see why this game is so important to the Loveland Indians as they're right in the middle of the pack. Thompson Valley, uh, wishful thinking for them if they're hoping for a playoff bid, but Loveland still right in the thick of things. But as you mentioned, right on the cusp right now, they're sitting on the bubble. Yeah, they're, they're okay tonight, it looks like. I mean, I know it's still early, and I don't want to prognosticate. Aaron Kubas to the ball carrier, tripped up right at the line of scrimmage. Looked like maybe Ben Prather. Well, Prather finished him off, but he was tripped up by uh, Wes Fisbeck, it looks like, number 19. If we can, Natasha, can we get that graphic back up showing the standings uh, sometime before the end of the first half here? To... Yeah, we want to take a go. look Thank at you, it. Man. We got North Glen coming up next week. Boy, and that's the one I was going to call to the attention. If Loveland can hang on tonight and then get North Glen, they're going to accumulate a whole bunch of playoff points and maybe catch Pooter or Horizon and Rocky. They can take care of business by winning the rest of their football games, but they'd certainly like some help. Hope going over the middle for Kubasta, well overthrown. Good coverage that time by Thompson Valley's DJ Puente. The free safety at 152 pounds uh, was all over Aaron Kubasta that time. Probably a good thing that Hoke's pass fell to the turf as it was good coverage. Yeah, it was a nice job by the Eagle defensive backfield. You know, Coach Denning does a heck of a job and has for a lot of years over here running this defense. Uh, Thompson Valley's given up 30 points, but defensively, it well, hasn't yeah. been that bad an effort. Yeah, Loveland's just been playing with such a short field. Exactly right. And Coach Jones knows it, and all the Eagle fans know it. And it, it, just does, it isn't very hard to go 20 or 15 yards. Turnovers will kill you. Corey Hogue blitzed hey. and dropped. Ben Prather in on the tackle, along with number 59, Chris Webb. The two defensive ends making a sandwich out of Corey Hogue. And the Indians will have to punt it away second time in a row now. The Eagle defense has done the job and stopped the Indian offense. Now the defensive end from the Eagles, I did not catch his number, uh, just had a free rush to the quarterback. Made, him, made the quarterback stop his feet and pull up and closed in. Most defensive ends were there that time. Ben Prather and Chris Webb. They got a good push up the middle as well, so Hope couldn't step up and get out of the way. 
Nathan Warren back to kick for Loveland. See if they can get I a believe nice it's Nathan Warren. Let me nice check. Turn out of this, the Indian. Oh, the snap went over his head and out of the end zone. Well, Thompson Valley, folks, is on the board. Oh. Two to nothing, their second safety of the football game. This is magical tonight. Well, oh, both teams having a little trouble taking care of the football this evening. Thompson Valley is on the board. Maybe that gives their offense a jump start. Boy, it didn't even close to him either. It went way over his head. I but that happened. Abdul Jabbar could have fielded yeah, that one. That happens sometimes. Hey, it's a long way. It's not an easy job to snap no. that football. Your head between your legs and some defensive lineman ready to pound on you. And, but this could be a, a significant point in the first half, stealing momentum back for the black and the gold here. Uh, if they can uh, get the scrimmage kick from the 20-yard line, they'll be in position at a fairly decent field position they should be to maybe make a push here late. Well, one thing we could, we didn't tell you, but we can tell you, even though it was 30 to nothing, Thompson Valley was not going to quit in this football game. There was no doubt about that. Uh, we've watched them struggle the last couple of years, and the one thing you could always say about a Chris Jones team is uh, you better play them right to the last play of the football game because they're going to play hard on every down, no matter what the score is, and they're showing it again tonight as uh, Loveland got to four touchdowns, but the last two drives, that Eagle defense has stood tall and put the clamps down and kept that Indian offense from moving the football. Now they've got to take advantage of this. Uh, another break for them. They didn't take advantage of the last break, which was the 15-yard penalty on the punt that gave them the football back. This is a high, short kick. Hang on. Fielded at the 50-yard line and wisely putting two hands on the football and taking what he can get for Thompson Valley that time is Brian Kirby. He's a linebacker, 175-pound sophomore, and linebackers aren't supposed to be able to catch the ball. There's a hanky on the field, Andy. Uh-oh, dirty laundry. Boy, and it's right where the tackle was made. Yeah. So you're wondering who it's on. Loveland is backing up. Well, no, they're not. They're just kind of milling about. It's a face mask against the Indians. So even more of a break for Thompson Valley. As they're going to march. Looks like it's going to be a 15-yarder. Put it at the 30-yard line. That's exactly what they need to do. So now Thompson Valley gets to play with a short field. With 444. They, plenty of time left. If they can get a Turning touchdown. Turning the return. Personal foul. Face masking. On the kicking team. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. Thompson Valley needs to take advantage of this. And I started to say that would give them a little momentum going into halftime. If, if they get a touchdown here, a 21, 20-point lead might be a little too much. But they can but, make a game of it. But it's all about momentum, and clearly the Eagles have it at this moment. Well, they're trying to get back in the football game, and Clint Miller's trying to do just that. He's under pressure, though. Throws near side for Fizbeck, and it should have been intercepted, but it's not. And Lance Riddler, the man who had it go through his hands, the one who, if you're at the game with us, <laughs> looking up week. number 39 in the program, that's not who it says it is. They take a look at the quarterback comparison tonight between the two passers. Not outstanding as far as percentage goes for Corey. Three for eight. Uh, Corey Hoke here in yardage is only 61, but again on a short field. And uh, Mr. Miller, number nine from the Eagles, three for seven for 18 yards. Miller hadn't had that much success. I started to say, if, you, if you're looking in your program, it says Peter Shockley is number 39, but it's not. It's Mr. Riddler. We were informed last week. Yes, sir. Should have had the interception on that one. As somebody nice jumped. That's a nice call by the offensive coordinator from uh, Thompson Valley. Linemen held their water real well. And uh, the Loveland Indians jumping in the neutral zone. Long count. Might get them five yards here. You bet. You bet. Good stuff by the Thompson Valley offensive line. Really is. It's tough to do. Dead ball foul. Encroachment. On the defense, five-yard penalty, still second down. So we can make it second and five instead of second and ten. Thompson Valley lines up. Only five seconds of move since they take, took over the football. Miller hands off to Stallone. He's hit right at the line of scrimmage, drives forward to get back to that line of scrimmage. And no gain on the play. In on the tackle for Loveland that time were a couple of the defensive linemen, including John Lozen, the 6'4", 196-pound tackle, wearing number 41, 
in the white and red. I'll tell you who disrupted that big time, Andy, was Simon Berg, number 72, 208 pound senior at the defensive tackle. Just destroyed the blocking scheme by penetrating. Well, trying to run up the middle and the two defensive tackles make the stop. That's what you want defensively. Can't ask for more than that out of those guys. Miller's pass, batted in the air and intercepted. Second interception of the ball game for Nathan Swanson as that one was batted at the line of scrimmage by one of the aforementioned defensive tackles, I believe. And Swanson picks it out of the air and takes it back out to, oh, where they're gonna mark it, about the 43 yard line. And Thompson Valley squanders a golden opportunity getting the ball on the level and 30. They turn it over again. Let's give credit where credit, credit is due though, Andy. Defensive tackle rushing right up the gut, spends a little bit extra energy by raising his hands and deflects the ball into the waiting arms of Mr. Swanson, who I told you earlier, he was ready to play when we were watching warmups tonight. Simon Berg, again, I think was the man who got his hands on the football as the handoff is to Brennan Ames. And he creates a hole of his own and gets down inside Thompson Valley territory down to inside the 35. And that's just a nifty run by Brennan Ames, a big one too. Well, let's see, 10, 20, 21 yards, 19 yards. That was the old ah, counter tray play. The let's call it 22 yards. Offensive guard and offensive tackle pulled from your camera side of the field to the opposite side of the field and oh, walled it off. I know all about counter tray. With those hogs back in oh, the day. Oh, I was huh? a Redskin fan back then with uh, a guy named John Riggins. First downs, Indians with a slight advantage there. Brock Nor, the man in motion, gets the football and picks his way through the pile and gets about four yards. Where did Riggins go to school out there, Andy? Uh, you better know this. I want to say it was Kansas, but I'm not sure. I think it was Syracuse, wasn't it? Could have been. I know he started his career with a Mohawk for the Jets. His haircut, by the way. A mohawk, yes. not the New York yes. mohawk. <laughs> Reverse. Oh, Jeremy Bloom nice. with the football. Thompson Valley, great job defensively. Careful on the sideline, no extras, please. <laughs> You're talking like a coach now, oh, Jeff. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing and worse than making a good play like that and then getting a penalty at the end of it. And ultimately, you don't want to see a kid get hurt on that on that hard ground off to the side there. That's for sure. But Thompson Valley, what a nice job. What a nice job. Good play there. I remember Riggins was out of football for a year before he came back, and I'd say that was a pretty good second career he had there. Oh, boy. Of course, you're kind of dating yourself, and so am I, but kids today, I don't think they know who John Riggins is. <laughs> I had to go back and watch some film. Reminds me of Nate Griffin over at Poodle High. Aaron Kubasta gets around the corner on the far side and gives out as much of a hit as he takes as it looks like he's got a first down. It's a great run. Inside the 25-yard line. Good stuff. Boy, they're just so well-disciplined philosophy-wise here. I'm going to reminisce just one more time. I, I'll okay. never forget the play in uh, Dan Marino's only trip to the Super Bowl against those Redskins in fourth and one, and Riggins bounced off left tackle and went 44 yards for a touchdown. I remember it. I got a day off of school when they won that. Wow. That's the old days now, for sure. <laughs> Don't do that anymore. First and 10. Inside handoff, looks like Ridenauer. And he's ridden down to the ground. Not much of a gain, they'll give him maybe a yard. And I don't know how it happened. Ridenauer's jersey's dirtier than anybody else's out there. Hmm. Then again, he does play fullback. But usually it's those offensive line guys that just end up just covered in mud. Not much of that tonight. A beautiful evening here at Ray Patterson. Corey Hogue fakes the pitch and keeps it going up the middle. Ooh, Ooh. and he is stuck. That was right at about the 17-yard line. Looks like Todd Olander, the man who made the hit. Possibly it was the cornerback, Chris Hunley. He'll put the lick on Hogan and makes it third down and four. Big defensive play here for Thompson Valley. Let's take a look at this one. You know what? I think they tried to run that counter tray again, Riggins style, and the penetration by the defensive uh, tackle bounced it, and uh, Hogan made a nice choice. 
pulling it down and keeping it. Olander giving credit for the hit as Hogue oh. pitches it again. And, oh, boy, Where that one should have been. I have no idea. I thought for sure Ryan Molesworth was gone the other, the other direction. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. They make the pitch. Did they get the first down? They're going to spot the football very close. Looks, looks like, like it's going to be fourth down in a yard. If we've got that one again, I'd like to see how that gosh. pitch made it through a couple of black shirts to get in, back into a white jersey. Mr. Hogue has the conscience of a gunslinger there. He, oh, he, he was getting dragged down that time. You can see both teams have gone for it once on fourth down. And Well, does Thompson Valley's fourth down conversion count as a made one since they got a first down by penalty? Ooh, I don't know. We're going to have to talk to our official statistician. That one. Wow. And looks like Loveland is taking a timeout. It can't be Thompson Valley because they don't have any left. A reminder. Our replay time, Saturdays at 9 a.m. and 7 p.m., Sunday at 10 a.m., Monday at 5. Tune in then to catch Chris Degnan and the coaches' show. You don't want to miss that as you get the insight from Coach Pooby and Coach Jones. And uh, we follow with the game on the half hour four times every weekend. It's the very best in high school sports here on Comcast. And uh, next week for you, the North Glen Norsemen against these Loveland Indians who are looking mighty good here tonight as they're putting a licking on the Indians. North Glen and the Norse here Friday night next week for the Loveland Indians. And of course, if you can't get enough football here are four times a week on Comcast, KHPN AM 1570 carries a, nice a lot of football as well. Be sure and give them a listen. I'll carry games for you live too, and so you can listen to it and then tune in if they're doing the same game we are. Tune in and watch it on the weekend and See what they're talking about. This is going to go against Loveland. They were not set. It looked like they tried to quick snap them a little bit to see if uh, Thompson Valley would have been ready. And I don't think uh, all the linemen and the running backs were uh, set in position. I think you're exactly right. Now let's see Dead if ball. our referee agrees. Ball start. Offense, still fourth down. Well, he's been very good about explaining things to us tonight. And that time he didn't give us the complete package. All we know is it's fourth down, but I think you're exactly right, Jeff. I wonder if they change the play call here or not. Option Rich going back pass. to us. Oh, he's going to throw. That's Brennan Ames letting it go for Jeremy Bloom. Did he make the catch? He did indeed. It's a touchdown. A touchdown, 19 yards from Brennan Ames to Jeremy Bloom. And the Indians put another touchdown on the board with exactly a minute to play. This is real nice play calling by Coach Poovey. The halfback option has yeah, been in his arsenal forever. It really has. The key to that, and it's easy to see, easier to see from up here than it is down in the field, is um, the quarterback really never re reads that in options. He simply pitches it as quick as he can so that the new thrower can get a good look as to what's happening downfield. Two-point play. I'll try it again. Pilkington is in the slot to the far side. Aaron Kubasta is all the way out at the sideline. Hogue across the middle and complete, good for two. It was That's Pilkington. There's that little slant in again. You'll watch the defensive back from Thompson Valley. He's in a full denial up on Pilkington, right in his face. Boy, he's he never preventing the jam. slot. He never gave a jam. Pilkington was not taken off his stride. He was trying to prevent the slant, and but then just didn't. Pilkington shut it just off. went by him. Yeah. No bump. Exactly right. Exactly. Got to lock up. Well, one minute to play in the first half, and Thompson Valley, who had the momentum back on their side, all of a sudden sees it shift over to the visiting side of the field once again as the Indians tack on eight more. They get 38-2. to two. And, uh, boy, the Eagles need to regroup. And they're going to have a chance to do it here pretty quick. And thank our crew tonight, giving you these wonderful shots like you see right there. You can see the Thompson Valley crowd hasn't gone away. They'll probably stick it out to the end support their team. Boy, they brought all, out all their Halloween outfits too, didn't they tonight? <laughs> it sure looked, I was hoping that would wait till next week. <laughs> and of course, uh, Loveland with their fans on the far sidelines, I've never seen the visitors stand so full here at Ray Patterson. It's a big money maker for this school district. You gotta like that. Molesworth watches it roll out of bounds. 35 yard line or make him re-kick? I think I'll take the 35 at this point. <laughs> As bad a field position as I've had if I'm Thompson Valley, I'm going to take the football. Absolutely. The Eagle offense. Well, 
I must have misread the clock before unless it started counting up because now there's a minute eight to play. <laughs> and it shouldn't have started on that kick, so we'll say that the touchdown was scored with a minute eight to play. I think I can get away with that. I think you can too. Take a look at the Loveland score drive. Well, we've got a chance at another touchdown off a turnover, Jeff. Yeah. After the tipped pass and interception, the second interception of the game by Nathan Warren, or excuse me, not Nathan Warren. I got number 24, Mr. not number Swanson 23, Swanson. Yeah. Swanson, Warren, they both ended in. Okay. This is the graphic I'm interested in finding out. The truck sending up points off turnovers. Uh, we'll see it in a minute. It's 14-0 uh, to zero in favor of the Indians. Well, that was before the last touchdown. That's oh. why they didn't bring it up. Yeah. They're, they're adjusting it. Very good, sir. For our sake. Because after all, you know, all we do up here is read. Well, yeah. Well, first down carry gets just about nothing. See, Paul Keeney's on top of things. Absolutely. He, he saw him starting to put that up, and he said, nope, nope, nope. We got to change that one before we get it. Kind of had his pride wounded tonight as those Lobos got beat last night. Well, here's the points off of turnovers. 24 for the Loving Indians and two for the Eagles. Is, uh, that's the only two points Love Thompson Valley's got is courtesy of uh, Moonshot Snap <laughs> on a punt attempt that sailed over Nathan Warren's head and into the end zone. A little counter play. Oh. Absolutely nothing doing as the Loveland defensive line and the linebacking core for the Indians have just given absolutely nothing tonight. Todd Olander, the ball carrier, and he's going to lose. Well, they, maybe they'll get him back to the line of scrimmage. Oh, they're just so physical up front. Indian. And Loveland takes a timeout with 10 seconds left. This is great coaching. This is great coaching. If they got another one, they should use it after this play. They're going to hopefully try to make uh, the Eagles punt one more time. Well, when you got a guy with the talents of Ross Pilkington back there to receive the punt, maybe you want to do that. You want to find out what Coach Jones thinks of this first half. I'll tune into the coaches show next week with Chris Degnan. He's got a special show for you next week. And, of course, Coach Poovey and Coach Jones will be together with Chris. That could talking. be interesting. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I know both those men have a lot of respect for each other. And uh, this is a, it's a first for us on the Coach's Show. We've never had that happen before, but it uh, should be interesting, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it as much as we'll enjoy it. That'd be like Mike Shanahan and Al Davis maybe sitting on the same show. I don't think it'd be quite that, uh, don't think there's quite that much animosity. Who owes who a couple hundred thousand dollars? <laughs> no, I understand those teachers in Loveland. They make good money. Well, not as much as they should. That's for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's not an easy job, and it's, I'm sure it's a very rewarding job, but it's one of the most important jobs in this country. The pitch is to Josh Delani. gets back to the line of scrimmage. Loveland quickly whistles for a timeout. Apparently, they do have another. This is great clock management. Great clock management. Four Good. seconds left, and they're going to make them punt to Pilkington. Put your all-state candidate back there, maybe set up a block, and uh, right. a pump block, and try to uh Well, that's the thing. You can it. go for the block and leave Pilkington back there by himself. He's got enough talent to make a play even without a wall. So you've basically got the double whammy here. You can, do, you can go for the punt, go for the kick. And let your all-stater. But still know you got a chance at a run back. Clear night here in uh, Loveland at Ray Patterson Field as we got pretty close to a full moon. Is that thing going to be full next weekend for Halloween? I don't know, but stay away from the werewolves if it is. I'll bring my garlic necklace next week. You know, this is a nice job by the Eagles. Watch this. Fourth down. He's just going to run backwards until the clock expires. Nice play. And now Mike Loveland Miller. doesn't touch the ball. That's a nice job by the That's a good Eagles call. staff. That's a very nice job. Coach Jones elects not to punt. Wise move. Just has Clint Miller run around in the pocket till the clock expires. The end of the first half of play, the crosstown game, Loveland hammering the Thompson Valley Eagles 38-2 the score after two quarters. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with our halftime stats. A few words from ourselves. Of course, 24 more minutes of football. Stay with us here on Thompson.
Hi, everybody. I'm Pat Murphy, star, host of the Movie Loft. Join me this month for an inside look at some of the great movies available in November on pay-per-view. Movies like The Matrix, The Mummy, Forces of Nature, My Favorite Martian, and many more. So remember, if you want convenience and the best that Hollywood has to offer, you just have to sit back, relax, and order in pay-per-view. Dad, where are you going? I'm going to play a little golf. Why? Because I really like golf. But why? Uh, good question. <laughs> it does take up a lot of time. Maybe I could spend a few more Saturdays doing something with you. Hey, Dad. Huh? When? Family. Isn't it about time? From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. <laughs> Take risks, and people are bound to talk. Showtime. Television that's edgy and fearless. Showtime. Most daring. Television's oldest risk taker. Welcome back to Ray Patterson Field. It's the Comcast Game of the Week. Sponsored by Primetime Pizza. And there you see it, the game you've been waiting for. As Chris Degnan said in the coaching show before this one, is not living up to expectations at the moment. 38-2 to the score at halftime. The Indians on top. And we talked about it before the game, Jeff, that Loveland was in a precarious playoff position at this point. And they needed a couple of big wins. Well, they're starting off well tonight. They lead it by 36 points at the half. And, uh, Sometimes, you know, we say statistics don't show the whole story. They show the story. All right, let's take a look. We'll they start with the rushing numbers. Not a whole lot of yards for Loveland, but they've been playing with such a short field all yeah. afternoon they, and all evening long. They really haven't had to go very far. 20 rushes for 95 yards. Conversely, the Eagles, 19 rushes for only 25 yards. Eagles it's, barely over a yard to carry. That's not going to get it done in anybody's system. Indians, uh, Six for 10 in the passing department for a total of 83 yards. And Thompson Valley, three of seven for 18 yards. Just, they're not sustaining enough offense. Their defense is on the field an enormous amount of time. Total yards are clearly in the favor uh, of the Loveland Indians, well over 100, while Thompson Valley has just in the 40s as far as the yards goes. yards, wow. Six first downs for the Indians, uh, but they didn't have an opportunity to get a lot of first downs. When you start at the 25-yard line, you can basically get one first down before you get in the end zone. The big number uh, in, in the whole game so far has got to be, there's two of them here, and they're both bad for Thompson Valley, was that penalty number and the four turnovers by yeah. the Eagles. Yeah, the turnovers for sure. The last one for the uh, Thompson Valley Eagles was a real killer, the tip pass after the Eagles took over at the 30-yard line of the Indians, their best field position. They'd just gotten a safety, had a chance to get back in the football game, and the momentum shifted back away over to the far side of the field. At that moment, as uh, Nate, um, Nate Swanson Nate Swanson came up with his second interception of the football game. It's going to be a candidate for my vote of player of the game. Yeah, we've, we've got a couple of good candidates right now on the Loveland Indian side of the football. Uh, somebody not to ignore on the Indian side is that there's uh, that tandem of defensive tackles, oh, yeah. Simon Berg and John Lozen, just doing the job up front. And the whole defensive front for Loveland, as you can tell by one point something yards per carry for Thompson Valley is uh, really doing a job along that line of scrimmage, and they're not that big. Uh, we mentioned that Coach Booby said he was a bit undersized, but uh, Lozen at 196 pounds and Simon Berg at 208 are standing tall in the middle of the field on that defensive front line. And even more bad news for Thompson Valley is we're underway here in the second half as they have to kick it away to Loveland. They do so, and at the far side, slipping and falling with the football, so that's where they stop. Of course, you can't get back up in high school football. Nick Cloberdans, the junior, slipped after he picked it up, so the Indians will have to take over at the 15-yard line. Well, certainly the Thompson Valley goal right now is to force a punt. They cannot allow the offense of the Loveland Indians to move that ball too often and too far and eat up any kind of time. They've, they've got to strike quick offensively, the Eagles do, and that starts with getting it turned over. 
Well, and the Eagle defense had a chance to rest during the halftime break. They were, as we mentioned, on the field for an awfully long time in that first half. 11.59 to go, just underway, third quarter, as Brennan Ames, who has a touchdown pass tonight on a halfback option, carries on the left side, Matt Rusticki in on the tackle, also Andrew Greer, the guy who strung it out for Thompson Valley that time and uh, turned the play back upfield, was Chris Webb, the defensive end. It's good for a gain of nine, however, but it could have been a lot worse. It's a nice offensive play. You, you talked about it, Jeff, in the first half. Loveland gets to the outside so quick. They really do, Andy. They, uh, they've got some quickness that other teams just don't have, offensively and defensively. It's hard to get to the perimeter against the Loveland defense, and it's equally impressive that their offense gets to the perimeter. Well, and they do it a lot of different ways. Now they've got a tight formation. Boy, they sure do. Look at them all beefed up in there. Two men to the near side. Oh, it's a flea flicker. Hogue throwing to Pilkington, who got open in the flat. Now he's got some room to run. Watch those Can jets. he split the defense? Oh, wow, what speed. Why would you ask that question? <laughs> well, if you ever had any doubt about the speed of one Ross Pilkington, let's take a the, look at this one on replay. You can set the 76 record. yards on the flea flicker as Pilkington puts Loveland on the board again. Boy, now he's got 16 points. Of course, he had a touchdown and two two-point conversions in that first half. Gets another touchdown here with 10.51 to play in the third. And we don't have that one on replay for you, unfortunately. We had a little technical glitch. Illustrious. But if you had a copy of this game for your very own, you could rewind it and see it again. Well, that brought us out of our chair. That, I didn't move that quick for, I haven't moved that quick in a long time. I think I hurt myself. What speed from Scott, Ross do we, have a, do we have a trainer in the truck? <laughs> hey, they're gonna kick one here. Check it out. Maybe. You're right, good point. This may be a little message for the North Glen Norsemen. The previous play, which was the flea flicker, as you described it, but they might didn't be go something. Deep. Well, now a flag comes down. They got it in the hands of their main man, and that'll be a message for the North Glen people to pay attention to. Yeah, it's just a little unusual, though, because so many times you see that flea flicker, and they just for leave the run. ball downfield yeah. in the home run, and this one they threw underneath. They had a receiver running deep to an All-State candidate <laughs> who, I, I let me tell you, he jetted from about the 50-yard line on in. and He put it on afterburner, that's for sure. about as good as I've seen. And he got it done. They will try the kick here. Make one now, come on. The kick is no good wide to the right. The Boy, they're doing trying. the kicking was Matthew Roberts, and it's no good. But there, there are coaches 44 to two. There are coaches in the state who just choose not to do that kicking thing after touchdowns. They just they just run two point plays all the time. Westminster, the Warriors, they do that all the time. Go for two. Well, we'll have to ask in. Coach Poovey about his philosophy on this one for this week. Uh, he's trying to get a kid who's maybe fairly consistent, and they're just not having luck finding that. Go re recruit another soccer player. Yeah, not a bad idea. Although I have done that and. Kicking a soccer ball and kicking different. a football are two different things. Indeed. I, I uh, had a conversation with a former NFL kicker who happened to be my soccer coach when I was a little kid, Jess Atkinson. I, I don't know if anybody remembers him. He played with the Giants and the Redskins before he had his knee blown out. And he said he grew up as a soccer player, and he said it's a completely different experience learning to kick a football. It's a different motion, even though it looks the same. Kick is fielded by Ryan Molesworth. Oh, he's what back a block. To the near side. Unfortunately, he didn't have any more blocks, and he's dropped at the 24-yard line, and that's where Thompson Valley takes over. But you're right, good hit on the far side there. Tyson Amick, number four from the Eagles. Just a sophomore, unloaded on the kick protection. Man, that was a great hit. So the Eagle offense. Boy, this is going to sound repetitious, but we got a graphic. We have a two-play drive. It took a minute and nine seconds for 86 yards. And the home run hitter, Mr. Pilkington, is a total of uh, 16 points tonight already. I didn't score 16 points in my high school career. <laughs> this guy's got it in one Well, nine. but were you playing defensive end? No, I was, I was lucky to see the field. That's why you're a coach I was, I was cerebral, though. 
See, and that, that's what makes the best coaches is those guys who got to sit on the sidelines and, and watch. Stuff, yeah. Oh, they got to stand next to the coach. Darn right. There's a Thompson Valley player down on the field, which is the reason for delay. Haven't been able to pick up the number for you. They're working on them right in front of the Thompson Valley bench here, and it's out around the 40-yard line. So I didn't really get to see what happened. But as soon as we can pick up a number for you, we'll let you know who it is. And we certainly hope it's nothing serious. And that is, of course, the last thing anybody wants to see on the football field is somebody get hurt for either team. Get word from our crack staff that the injured Thompson Valley Eagle is Kirk Terry, number 50, the 5'10", 180-pound sophomore. He's listed as a guard and defensive end, but, of course, on that plays in on special teams. And they're still working on him a little bit out there. And, of course, we'll let you know the status of Kirk Terry. And Walking under his own power. That's a good sign. See, I've always felt that the best coaches are the guys who weren't very good. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, for a reason, because the guys, the really great players, uh, usually had everything come so yeah. naturally to them that they can't understand when other guys can't quite pick it up. I agree with that. Magic Johnson was not a very good coach. For instance. Yep. Pass is incomplete behind the intended receiver that time, which was Zeb Shockley. Second down and 10 now. Well, they keep the passing routes are few and far between here for the Eagles, and all that's allowing uh, the defensive line from Loveland to just tee off. They're, they're coming. Well, the right now the Indians are not really having to respect the play action. Correct. Thompson Valley has not been able to run the football. Straight drop this time, swing past to Aaron Pouchon, and he's drilled and dropped right as he catches the football. Nathan Warren, I believe, made the stop as he gets up off the bottom of the pile. No gain on the completed pass, and Clint Miller paid for throwing it. As he was hit and dropped. He's been picking himself up off the ground most of the night. Reminder, folks, if uh, you want to watch this game, we have it four times every weekend, but if you're looking for live football action and you want to just listen to it, we'll give you how to do that. There's our replay times. I'll tell you a little more in a moment as Miller gets hit again as he lets this one fly. And Lance Riddler watches it bounce by his feet. And it'll be third or fourth down and 10 now. And Thompson Valley will punt it away. That was our replay times. Of course, Chris Degnan with the coaches show a special one next week. We'll have uh, both coaches in studio at the same time. It's a first for ever for us on Comcast at the coaches show. And uh, we follow on the half hour with the game, but be sure to tune in next week. I'm sure both Coach Poovey and Coach Jones will have uh, some interesting things to say about this one. Certainly want to find out from Coach Poovey uh, what he's going to do about the kicking game. It has not been there. Nice Good punt. punt. Clint Miller and Pilkington can't catch up with it and rolls out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. So a great job by Miller kicking the football. We started to say if you're looking for some live football action right here in Loveland, Tune in to AM 1570 KHPN. Uh, they've always got uh, live high school football for you, so you can listen to the game. They'll have uh, Loveland and Fort Col or North Glen and, uh, on Friday night next week, and then, of course, you can watch that game here on Comcast and see everything you heard about. And also on Thursday night, they'll have these Thompson Valley Eagles uh, on the road at Fort Collins, live for you on AM 1570 KHPN. Preliminary word on the injured Thompson Valley Eagle is a neck sprain. So that's a lot better news than it could be as the Eagle defense uh, traps Corey Hope behind the line of scrimmage. Kirk Terry, the sophomore, looks like he'll probably be okay, but I would imagine we might not see him again tonight. Yeah, in a situation like the neck, uh, no chances, taking no chances. Now, they certainly won't. And uh, we'll probably see him Take a look at the wild card standings. You talked about this before the game, Jeff, and uh, you can see Loveland's 17th right now. And you got to be in the top 16 to go to the playoffs. That's the cutoff marker right above them. It is, yeah. And uh, North Glen right now on top of the pack. 
Second down play for Loveland's a good one. Ben Prather finally brings down the Indian ball carrier, Aaron Kubasta. Prather had some help that time. Boy, it's getting Todd exciting. Olander and Jared Thigpen, sorry, this helping time, out. No, this time of year with those playoff points, I know the, the young men on those uh, sidelines, they start paying attention real closely. Uh, they call it scoreboard watching. In this case, it's playoff point watching because everybody wants to make those playoffs and extend their seasons. Oh, they sure do. You get to play a few more games, which is always fun. 8.23 and counting. Third quarter, right side handoff, first down on third and short. Looks like Jared Ridenour is indeed. And he still has the dirtiest jersey on the field. I think he just didn't wash it. I'm not sure. First and 10 for the Indians. And a reminder, our Comcast broadcast is sponsored by Primetime Pizza. If you haven't had the food from Primetime, you should give them a try. It's excellent. We have it before every game. In fact, it even makes the barbecues in the parking lot look bad. I haven't had any in about an hour. I, yeah, I, I hope they got some left. Paul was going to bring some up. That was the phone number, 667-7099. Mention the spot here on Comcast. They'll give you a free two-liter bottle of pop. Pitches to Brock Knorr, and he's bumped and driven out of bounds. Nice tackle that time by Todd Olander, or excuse me, Matt Rosticki, at about the 35-yard line. Gain of six, but uh, good tackle after Knorr got the corner turned. Speed option play, just the quarterback and the tailback at the perimeter, and Mr. Hogue did the right thing. Pitch it and let those strong guys run hard. Strong and fast. Really, I'm still. It, it, you never get over the fact of how fast they get around the corner. Yeah, Coach Puvis does a great job in the off season, as a lot of these coaches in the front range do. Uh, he's just got a he's got a stable full of kids who can just scoot. That's the one thing they always say you can't teach: speed. And unfortunately, guys like me weren't blessed with it. Pass is incomplete over the middle as Thompson Valley had pressure put on by Aaron Pushan who snuck through the middle and uh, was in Corey Hoke's face before he wanted to throw that one. So it's incomplete and third down and four. A reminder, next week for you, we've got the North Glen Norsemen against the Loveland Indians. Number three team in the state behind only Cherry Creek and Mullen, who are also playing tonight somewhere in the south of Denver. Pitch near side to Knorr. He gets around the corner, makes one guy miss. Ryan Molesworth finally runs him out of bounds. <laughs> There's a Thompson Valley Eagle down there. Ben Prather couldn't catch him. Dove for the ankles, and he's just now getting up. You know, I know we've talked about this the last two, three, four weeks that we've watched these Indians play, but their receivers, including Mr. Pilkington, do a great job of shield blocking and stock blocking on the perimeter sprung him for extra, the runner for extra yards. Well, when you run wide like that, that's so important because that's where you're trying to get to, and if you can make that block out there, you get the, you get the good run. First down, 43-yard line of Thompson Valley. Hoke, straight drop, going near side, and making the catch is Ross Pilkington. He's driven out of bounds by Chris Hunley, whose coverage on the play wasn't horrible. It was just a good pass from Corey Hogan, a good job of catching the football by Ross Pilkington. Big gain down inside the 10, and you'll see it here. Chris Hundley does not have bad coverage. The corner lays off real well, but when you run backwards and Ross Pilkington runs forward, <laughs> it's That's not tough. gonna be close. He was only, only had a yard and a half on him. Yeah. Hundley at 6'1", 166 pounds, doing a good job trying to keep up. Pilkington at 6 one 176, so we pretty good him. match up there. First Over. and goal. Pitch. Lots of room on the near side for Aaron Kubasta, but Thompson Valley strings it. Football's loose, and Thompson Valley has it. And now a flag comes out as Matt Rusticki comes up with the loose football, and I'm not sure how it came out of Kubasta's hands. Didn't even look like he'd been hit. Wow. So Thompson Valley catches the break. There is another penalty marker down over near the line of scrimmage. And then we had a, an additional flag after the fumble. Post possession. Well, let's see if we can figure out. Kubast is the ball carrier. And let's see how this thing pops loose. Looked like it was stripped, maybe by either Andrew Greer, number 10, or number 34 for Thompson Valley. Jared, uh, they're going to flag. They're going to flag number 40 from Loveland. 
Ridnour. Late hit. For, well, he's trying to dig the ball out, and it was well uh, clearly after the recovery occurred, and so they're going to get penalized. Wow. Yeah. The first penalty was against Thompson Valley, a personal foul. Ooh. And then they, uh, so we had a personal foul signal for Thompson Valley and a personal foul signaled against Loveland. We'll have to wait and see if they sort it out. If that gets offset. Be interesting to see. In the meantime, get out your pencils and paper as they're talking to the Thompson Valley coaches. Because in a minute, we're going to give you the address to use in case you'd like to own a copy of this game or, of course, any of the games we have here on Comcast. Here it is. Write that one down. Because we're going to have to break for it for a moment. And now During we get the call. The play, live ball, personal foul. Wait. <laughs> well, now he's got to get it straightened up. I think what you're going to have, Andy, is a live ball personal foul against Thompson Valley, which would negate the turnover, but then a dead ball personal foul foul against Loveland, which will allow the Indians to retain possession, but lose 15 yards from the spot of the foul. Well, judging by where they've spotted the football, that would make sense. That would make absolute sense, Jeff. I was trying you hard. You called it there. right before. I was trying hard because th this <laughs> was You got confusing. it right in the first half. When the, when the referee, the Whitecaps, started to say it's a live ball foul on Thompson Valley. That would mean that it's would a free play for the penalty. That's right. Uh, the, the fumble. You're right. It's a free play. Well, now, hang on now. Here we go. See, they would have to Loveland's assess defense that penalty is on the field. against Thompson Valley. I right. think that's what you're going to see. They're going to assess the penalty half the distance. The foul was live ball, personal right. foul against the defense. That's half the distance to the goal. First down. Well, now well, they waved off the flag against Loveland then. And didn't they give us a signal that Loveland had committed a personal foul also? They did, uh, but I also saw when the, the official threw the flag, he picked it back up. I wonder if he was reaching for the bean bag for okay. the fumble Good call. and pulled the flag out. By no, the here state. it comes now. Now, now they're now marching. Now we're going to march it back the other way. What they've done is they just sit, they've penalized. Dead ball foul. In order. Personal of foul. It's still first down. Loveland. And that's the second penalty. And it's first and goal. And Jeff, you called it exactly right. They marched the penalty off against Thompson Valley, makes it first and goal. And then the dead ball foul against Loveland backs them up 15 yards. So now bottom, it's first and goal from the 20-yard 20, line. Bottom line is bad break for the Eagles because they lose the fumble that they had recovered. Yeah. Oh, man. That's four we don't know what personal the personal fouls. foul was. It's got to be at four or five at least. On we'll get Paul Keeney to tell us exactly what the number is. Put him on the spot there, by the way. <laughs> by the way, that address we gave you a few moments ago. If you'd like a copy of the game, send us a letter and a check or money order for $25. Include in the letter your name, address, and phone number, and let us know which game you want. Mail all that to that address, and we'll get a copy made for you and sent to you as soon as we can. And a reminder, folks, if you would like to purchase a copy of the game, we do need your request in writing. The Lost Art of Letter Writing is alive and well at Comcast. Uh, we can't take any phone orders, unfortunately, so uh, use that address. And, of course, if you, if you are a letter writer, Send us a letter and let us know what you think of the broadcast. Drop us a line. Something you'd like to see us do. We'd be happy to read it. Hoax pass is a dandy to Brock Knorr, and he is out of bounds or in the end zone. Knocked out at the one-yard line. Andrew Greer made the hit on the far side. What a nice But play. a nice toss from Corey Hoag to Brock Knorr. That's just a touch pass over the top, Jeff. Yeah, they ran a curl with the wide out on the far sideline to bring the corner into the inside of the formation, too. And then you slip the back, the tailback, into where the corner was, and you've got linebackers chasing tailbacks, and that's not usually a good matchup. Greer is the man who knocked him out of bounds, and on first and, or second and goal now, Loveland is into the end zone for a touchdown. And What you're going to see happen now, Andy, is they're going to... Didn't did catch they, who, who scored the touchdown that time. They didn't mark it on the Still board watching either. the replay. They haven't put the points on the board yet. <laughs> well, it is Thompson Valley's scorekeeping crew here tonight. They might be reluctant. <laughs> you're going to see a... Uh, Loveland trying to get the last man in. You're going to see a speed-up rule here in a minute. And There's a nice up kick. And Holy good. Cow. That was a good boot. That and was outstanding. 
It's 51 to two. And I hope we've got a replay on this uh, touchdown run because I didn't see who scored. And other than that, we'll have to get, uh, we'll have to get Paul Keeney to tell us who scored the touchdown. Suspect it was probably Rittenauer, but I don't know. Maybe Paul can run down to the radio booth and find out. <laughs> You're going to see a speed up rule uh, that Chassa has put in a, a couple years ago now. And when a team in the second half is down by 45 points or more, the clock will not stop except for timeouts. And so incomplete passes uh, will be treated like a running play in the sense that the clock will not stop. Um, they'll be stopped, the clock will stop for penal penalizations uh, and timeouts only. And so what you're going to see is the six minutes and 54 seconds of the third period left here and all the fourth this clock is going to wind unless Thompson Valley scores to close the gap under 45. I love one to kick off again their kicking team is probably getting a little tired fielded by Shane Plews or excuse me Ryan Molesworth who breaks some tackles and gets out over the 40 yard line and to the credit of the Thompson Valley fans there's still excitement on the near sideline as a uh, the crowd got uh, a little excited there as it looked like Molesworth might break one a little longer than that. But Thompson Valley has good field position to start at their own 40-yard line. As, uh, that's a nifty little move to squeeze through that hole. Finally brought down by the man who just kicked an extra point a moment ago, Matthew Roberts. There's a scoring drive, and hey, we found out who scored the touchdown. Quarterback, Quarterback keeper. 10 plays, 82 yards. Corey Hogue capping it off. Handoff again, and Thompson Valley once again, not much room to run as uh, Josh Delon finds it rough going on the left side. The clock will not shut off again unless there's a timeout on the field. Or if Thompson Valley scores to close the gap. Yep. We're we'll gonna see if that happens. We're gonna save on tape because this half from here on out, barring those two different scenarios, the, tape, the half will go fast and we'll save on tape. <laughs> our producer, <laughs> our executive producer, Scott French will like that. After all, he's kind of stingy. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. I think he always hides one of those primetime pizzas as we've got a flag down now. I think it's gonna be delay and it is against Thompson Valley. Wow. That's tough. Second down and 10 already and now it's second and 15. And uh, he just informed us that he ate the pizza he had hidden from everyone, so he can't Good send ball, any more foul. up here. Delay, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. And so it'll be second down and 15. He's lying to us now. Well, you can't hear him, folks, at home, but uh, we can hear he's talking to us in our ears, and he's giving me a hard time right now. I'm not buying it. I know he's got a pizza saved there somewhere in his pocket. Second and 15. Sprint out pass. Miller's in trouble, throws near side and short of the intended receiver, who is Todd Olander. The nearest man to it was a Loveland Indian by the name of uh, Scott Klein. Or excuse me, not, I'm looking at 40. Uh, Jason Coulter, number 48. And third down and 15 now. As Miller had to get rid of it, he was under pressure. And you're right, Jeff, the clock continues to run. Yeah, it's a good rule. I know a lot of the purists purists of the game don't like it but you know you're talking about 16 year old kids out there potentially and uh, when you're getting a woodshed type score put on you uh, uh, you, you don't want to get, get anybody with. hurt absolutely right you need to get over with. and it, in a lot of cases like that it, it's somebody being physically overmatched and that's really not the case here and is it intercepted or caught it's Boy, intercepted what a nice play and that's Nathan Warren the punter the 23 and 24 have had a nifty afternoon, and Clint Miller slow to get up as he was drilled as he let that one go. Well, he went to the shotgun again. This is like teeing off and stealing for the defensive line. Just crunching to the quarterback, and what a nice pick. What a Boy, nice he took pick. it away from, uh, it looked like it was Aaron Pouchon or Wes Fisbeck. I saw zero, and that would probably be 40 or 20 out there in the pattern. The striped shirts are talking. Oh, no. Yeah. We've had more than one conference, and here's an interesting thing. The uh, they're gonna rule down it. distance markers haven't moved yet. Yep. yep. It's Loveland football. I think they might have been talking as whether whether or not someone had hit the ground. 
we got fumble, uh, fumbles showing here, one for the Eagles, none for the Indians. But look at the interceptions, four for the Eagles. Boy, you just, their well, offense is not generating It's so tough enough. to throw the football when yeah. you can't run it at all. Exactly. Because like you said, those defensive ends, those defensive tackles, just they go into pin a, their ears back. They go into a speed rush mode. You're exactly right. And they head for the quarterback. And if they, you could, at that point, they've got enough confidence, even if somebody, if they hand the football off, they've got three linebackers behind them. I'd like to know how many times the Loveland Indians started to drive on the Thompson Valley side of their 50. Got some new faces in the ball game now is uh, running to the right side and picking up a first down for the Loveland Indians. New ball carrier, and that's Nick Cloverdans. 161 pound, five foot five inch junior. Loveland has a lot of short running backs. Well, but you know what, they can go. They can really pick them up and go. Uh, well, and, and they play 30 pounds heavier than maybe they actually are. Look at Jared Ridenauer yeah, you're playing right. fullback at, at, what's he weigh, 170 pounds maybe. Okay, 181, but he plays like a guy who's more like 210. Yes. It's called the weight room. <laughs> I never did find out where that was in my school. <laughs> Tom Savelli says they had the ball. the ball carrier again. Don't Not think the referee agrees with him. You're right. Second down now, a gain of about two on that play. Looks like Coach Poovey's called the dogs off here, Andy, as you were saying. He's got some new people in there. Well, it's a, good, the, uh, it's a good chance to get some guys in hey, some you experience bet. in this game. You bet. You may need them later on this season and certainly for next year. Well, and it's it just breeds success because you're playing your crosstown rival. They can walk through the streets all summer long. They can visit with these Thompson Valley kids at the mall and, and brag about getting in the game as a 10th grader or so. That's Cloverdans in motion this time. Pitch near side, another new face in the ball, ball game. And dragged down after a short gain, and now a penalty flag comes down in the backfield. The new ball carrier for Loveland is Andrew Hummel, number 31, 5'7", 166 pound junior, and a new quarterback for Loveland. Yeah. And I think he's going to be the one, he may be the one flag for the penalty. We'll have to wait and see. The flag came down between a Loveland, the, the Loveland quarterback, the new quarterback, Ryan Holderman, and one of the Thompson Valley players, John, and my apologies, Mr. Holderman, as the penalty is going to be whistled against Thompson Valley. And this one, I think, is a little bit of frustration on the Eagles' side of the football. The substitutions of, in personnel for the Loveland Indians is going to force the offensive coordinator to simplify the game plan, meaning they're not going to be as sophisticated. Toss, we've seen toss left, we've seen toss right, and some simple things up the middle. And, and that's good, too, because that is all about getting the game over in a hurry at this point. Well, and the reason for that, of course, is not that these guys aren't talented. They personal just don't get foul, a few snaps. During the live ball, on the defense, exactly. half the distance to the goal, first down. Yeah, first well, down and 10 now from the 12-yard line. Fouls. That is a boatload of them, and that's not going to please Coach Chris Jones, no matter what the score is. Fake toss, inside handoff to Knorr, and he's down to the six-yard line. Nice game there. There's another guy who, who lines up in the fullback position quite a bit for these Loveland Indians. Brock Knorr, 5'6", 165 pounds. That is not fullback weight, but he runs like one right between the tackles. Well, they have no fear of the running backs. Heck, he'll backs. run between the guards. Yeah, absolutely right. They have no fear of the running backs from Loveland. They just grab it and head up field. Clock running, 31 seconds, 30 seconds now to play. The last four minutes went fast, didn't it? Yes, they did. With that speed clock going, you bet it does. Wishbone behind the new quarterback, Ryan Holderman. Holderman pitches near side, that's Cloberdans, and he is down at about the six yard line, so maybe a gain of a yard. We're going to the fourth quarter, folks. And that is gonna do it for the third quarter as the clock winds down, five, four, three, two. See, the clock slows up and goes feet down. And that is the end of three periods of play from Ray Patterson Field. The Crosstown matchup, and it's all Loveland Indians. The score after three, 51 to two. The Indians on top of the Thompson Valley Eagles, and they're looking for more. The second string's in, but uh, they're inside the 10. And of course, between quarters, it means it's time to break out the answer to our trivia question, which we've never got any clues on from the band. Um, and I have to get on to Tasha Hurd. She, is, uh, she finds these trivia questions. Trivial pursuit questions and doesn't give us any hints at all. Natasha, of course, on graphics for us tonight. And here is our graphic. 
He was cut from his grade school team the first time he tried out, but he was so determined to be a member of the team that he made himself the water boy. Eventually led the team to two city championships. The man wearing number 24 in that photo is? Well, we give we up. We give up. He's hurt. Oh That's gosh. why. See, we didn't know because he's hurt. Well, his hair is curly now. Well, I thought the same thing when he came out of college, too, that uh, he wasn't quite as good as... Oh, isn't that amazing? Six, sixth quarterback draft. Approaching 60,000 yards through the air. There was a guy named, let's see, Blackledge drafted in front of him. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of others. O'Brien. Uh, Kenny O'Brien. Pitch near side, trying to get around the corner, not doing it. Flag down in the end zone. You're going to have holding against the Indians. And Rusticky made the tackle. The new running back for Loveland is number one, Monty Brunk. 5'9", 185-pound sophomore. Hey, they're going to get some size back in the backfield here in a year, but uh, as we mentioned, there's a flag down in the corner. Wide receiver, number 81, Casey Kale. Had his hands where they should not have been. Uh, you're exactly right. It's against the holding call against Loving. Uh, going back to Tim Marino there, uh -huh. uh, there was a stat on the other, uh, I was watching him on Monday Night Football here a while back. For his career, he has 90 yards rushing. I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> he's, he's in, what, his 17th year. So what's that, about uh, six yards a year? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> this guy does not run with the football, folks. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the end of the run, still third down. And, of course, those uh, many of you will remember another quarterback who was drafted uh, ahead of Dan Marino in that year's draft. Some guy named Elway. Where'd he go to school? Stanford. Oh that might, I couldn't tell you where Marino went to school. I think it was Pitt, wasn't it? It was. It was. Todd Blackledge was in front of him. Kenny O'Brien. Jim Kelly, I think, was, uh, wasn't he in front of him? But he went to USFL or something like that. Halfback option. Good throw. And it's a touchdown for Loveland. Boy, the new back in the ball game, Andrew Hummel, gets himself a touchdown pass. And making the catch, I believe, was it number 81? Yeah, I think it was. I think he got just a, Casey he Kale. made up for his holding penalty, Casey Kale. Boy, that'll be something he'll never forget. No, no not at all. I lost my pencil. <laughs> Let's see. Here we go. Hummel. Not held up enough that we should be able to see who caught it. It was indeed Casey Kale. And with 10:57 to play in the fourth. Loveland tacks on another score. Boy. That's a tough Let's call see. down in that area. I mean, well, you want run. those guys to learn that play, but. Yeah, they run the sweep. Tough. They run the sweep. They run the sweep. And uh, here come the Thompson Valley defensive players. And the tailback pulls it down and throws it. We are going to offer you another opportunity to watch some more football next week as uh, Number three team in the state, 5A classification. North Glen Norseman coming up to Ray Patterson in which will be a huge rematch from last year's game uh, in which the Loveland Indians uh, did not succeed down there on the carpet at the five-star stadium. And so I'm sure Coach Poovey Get him on the grass. Gotten, no, get, get him <laughs> on the grass and slow him down a little bit and uh, take a chance at the number three team in the state. It'll be a great matchup, especially there, with there the way they There's going to be a lot of speed in that game. Oh, uh, oh yeah. I think I'll have to bring something from my deck because they may be going <laughs> like this back and forth and back and forth. You and Brian will have a great time with that one. Yes, we will. Uh, right, Jeff will be leaving us again next week. Brian will be back. And Mo uh, Ryan Molesworth is hit and dropped inside the five-yard line, running east and west on the kickoff. It's usually a bad thing. It's like Derek Zeller who made the stop on special teams, and it was. And uh, we apologize for hesitating a little bit on the numbers, but uh, Loveland has emptied the bench. Being up 58-2, you can uh, kind of guess why. I want to remind you, if you want to see a very special coaches show next week with Chris Degnan, your host, uh, he'll have both Coach John Poovey and uh, Coach uh, Chris Jones from Thompson Valley in at the same time, a first for the coaches show. And... Uh, uh -oh. there, and that's a safety, folks. Should be anyway. Nope, they say he got out of the end zone. Yep. The far, that uh, Loveland defense is fired up, and they've got the second team in there as well. And uh, 
Boy, they just having trouble doing anything tonight is Thompson Valley. Well, they know they're going to run the ball. Loveland's convinced it's a run, and they just run through. They just run nice through the Nice job of tackling that time. Looked like uh, Jason Coulter oh, okay. who made the tackle. Let's see. Second down from their own one. Inside handoff, not much doing, but maybe squeezing out enough room, do one more like that, you'll have room to punt. Wow. I think Paul's telling me I called the wrong guy catching the touchdown pass. We'll find out in a moment. Yeah. Ah, see, I, I, I knew I wasn't sure if it was uh, Mr. Kale. Nick Cloberdan's on the receiving end of that last touchdown pass. Another Sorry, relatively, Nick. yeah. And uh, Casey, good, better luck next time. <laughs> Another relatively short drive, only 40 yards, seven plays, four minutes and 24 seconds, capped off by the touchdown pass. That's a tough call down there, as I said earlier, when you run that halfback option pass. Boy, I'll tell you. And that time they ran it to the left so that uh, right-handed thrower is going across his body. As Thompson Valley runs it up the middle one more time, I believe that was Todd Olander, the ball carrier. And he's dropped inside the five, and Lovell will have to punt it away. Aaron Pouchon, actually, the ball carrier that time. Here comes Mr. Pilkington and Brock Knorr. Ten safeties. Yep. And now, well, maybe it's not going to be Pilkington. Oh, he's definitely on the field, but Coach Poovy is saying, well, I think we'll take the thoroughbred off. Bringing him off. You know what? They got too many guys on the field. Yes, they do indeed. I don't think anybody caught it, though. No, the referee wasn't even looking. And oh, what is he doing? <laughs> oh, man. What on earth was that? <laughs> That's what Coach Poovy's going to ask when he gets to the sideline. I love it, though. Hey, he tried to pick it up. You got the I was getting ready to say, and that's where it'll be downed. And Thompson Valley all of a sudden has the football back. Hey, that's neat. Well, it, this is this is what happens. You get the young guys in there. They certainly want to make a play. And uh, yeah, it was dangerous by the Loveland Indians, but they'll well, retain. Yeah, the Eagles do not recover it. I thought they had the football, but uh, the Loveland Indian offense ran to the sidelines. But they were just going to get some uh, coaching help, huddle up over there, bring it out. As now they're back with Ryan Holderman taking the snaps. The pitch is to Cloberdance. Gets around the corner on the left side. More of that Indian speed and he's got a first down down inside the 40 close to the 35 yard line. Cloberdance runs hard. 160 pound junior. 5 foot 5. Andrew Hummel with a touchdown pass. He won't forget that. see. So Loveland has had three different players throw for a touchdown tonight. Counter. You called it. Cloberdance fumbled the football and it looked like Matt Rusticki picked it up for Thompson Valley. Dropped right into, well actually it's not Matt Rusticki, it's number 27 for Thompson Valley and that would be I'll tell you in a moment, DJ Puente we called his name a few times but I forgot who it was. I want to remind you, Colorado and American taxpayers are demanding accountability in public education, and nowhere is that accountability more evident than in high school activities, activities that involve half of the students of most schools at about 1% of the entire school budget. It's by far the best bargain in education today. A message from Comcast Communications and the Colorado High School Activities Association, more commonly known as CHASA. I like that. That's good PR stuff there. Well, they do a magnificent job in this state. It's a nice call. Wes Fisbeck takes the pass over the inside. You better tuck that thing away. He's dropped, but not before he has a first down. He's driven out of bounds by the Indians, Jason Coulter. A reminder also that uh, if you're getting a little hungry watching this football game and the Indians came out hungry tonight, we recommend primetime pizza. We'll take a look at the replay first, and then we'll get you the phone number. Got a crossing route by the drooling. tight end. Quarterback hits him on the undercut. Good catch, too. Needs to switch the ball here at the end. You young football players out there, 
put that ball on the outside so that if there is a fumble, it'll spill out of bounds and you'll retain possession. Also keeps that uh, helmet or shoulder pad from knocking it when the defender hits you. Miller's pass is behind Brandon Horton and falls incomplete. I do want to tell you about Primetime Pizza. They're our sponsor here on the Comcast Game of the Week. I'm going to come Not back next week just, just for, for the, the pregame pizza. pizza. You yeah. bet. You they bet. feed us, the whole Comcast crew, and you know we always go home happy. You can tell we're happy on the air. <laughs> There's the phone number, 667-7099. Give them a call. Dang. Mention you saw the ad here. Free two-liter bottle of your favorite pop. The Hammond. Which, uh, the, the choice in the booth, by the way, is a Diet Cola product. And the, ham, and the ham and pineapple. Oh, baby. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> so we urge you to give them a try. And uh, 340 and running. Better get you replay times in here one more time as Todd Olander tries the left side and gets seven yards. That's about the best run Thompson Valley's had all night, and that's not saying much. They go over the left side. A reminder of our replay times. Saturdays at 7 a.m. and 9 or 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. I'll get them right. Sunday at 10 a.m. and Monday at 5. Chris Degnan with a very special coaches show next week. Uh, or this week with uh, next week with both coaches in studio. <laughs> you don't want to miss that. And we follow with the game on the half hour. Brian rejoins me next week. Jeff Fulton's been with us the last two weeks, and we certainly appreciate that. As we wind down, under three minutes to play now, as Olander tries the right side this time and has the first down. And uh, another thing that we do have to remind you folks of is that this broadcast is the sole property of Comcast Communications. Any retransmission or rebroadcast of this program in part or whole without the authorized written consent from Comcast Communications is expressly prohibited. Also want to get What's that mean? That means you, you can't sell this. Okay. Unless, unless you're Comcast, right. in which case we charge $25, and you can't use it for a commercial purpose. Absolutely. In other words, you can't have a big party at your house and charge, charge people admission. five bucks admission. But you can buy a copy. Oh, absolutely. 210 and counting. Handoff is to Shane Plews, who wisely had two hands on the football as he came through the line of scrimmage. Finally dropped, but not before a pretty good game by Benjamin Kapins Kapinski. New name in the ball game, the 5'11", 170-pound senior, wearing number 38 for the Indians. Another reminder, we've got North Glen next week against Loveland, and two weeks from tonight, our regular season finale, Rocky Mountain and Thompson Valley, right here on Channel 3 in Loveland. Under two minutes to go, Andy. And as you mentioned, the clock running, so this game moving quickly here in the fourth quarter as it's 58-2. And I'd say that's a false start. <laughs> <laughs> At any level. That's an all-American false start. Wes Fisbeck, you got your name. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Wes. We have to wait till he turns. It is indeed. Uh, he had the snap count wrong, I suspect. And that'll cost the Eagles Ball five foul. yards. False start. Offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Well, Jeff, I want to thank you to cover for coming out to uh, fill in for Brian and filling in for me a few weeks back when I yeah. was uh, out of town. My third show and my funnest show of all. I've had a great time. You guys treated me like a regular, and I very much appreciate that. Oh, we've enjoyed having you. We appreciate all the insight you bring to the game. It's always nice to have a coach in the booth every now and then. Well, thanks. Uh, you know, friends of a friend hooked us up, and, uh, well, I just really enjoyed my time. Now you get to see the other side of it. Yeah. This is how the other half yeah. lives up here. See, it's we get uh, the second guess coaches. You bet. Well, <laughs> we get to speculate. We get to do yeah. all that kind of stuff. As long as I'm up here, we're not going to second guess too many of them because <laughs> I know exactly how hard they work, the hours involved. I'm, well, coaches, will be, coaches will be up at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning watching tape, oh, getting yeah. ready for next week. It's just. Uh, uh, I know exactly how you feel, so I don't difficult. second guess officials. <laughs> Because I've done it. You can do that to officials. They don't. They don't have any problems. Well, I've never refereed football, but I have uh, refereed basketball yeah. and soccer, and I know it's not an easy chore. Now, Coach Poovey's sending in some uh, youngsters. You can see them coming on the field now. Four or five new bodies, and uh, you know, want to get them a snap. Like I said that earlier, they'll have all summer to be able to say, "I played in the Thompson Valley game." These, these are huge, huge events for these young boys. More importantly, next week. 
when they're trying to get a date for Saturday. Hey, there you go. <laughs> they'll be able to say they played the Thompson Valley game. Oh, hurry and snap the ball. Well, they're, they're not going to get a snap. But they're on the field right at the yes, end. Yes, they are. They get to shake hands and the jump football up game and is over. Number 91. That the young one, boy. He was excited. Zachary Borg, you'll get your name on the air. He's my favorite. 5'4", sophomore, 212 pounds, defensive tackle. He was on the field, but they didn't snap the ball. But he... He could get a well, ball for... Well, what he should have done is fallen over and got his jersey and then he really... I'm telling you what, I might vote for him for player of the game just because he was there. Just for the excitement. Well, that is the end of regulation and the end of the football game. The final score, the cross-town game, Loveland dominates 58-2, to the final over Thompson Valley. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be right back with the final stats, our players of the game, and a goodbye for Jeff Fulton. Stay with us. <laughs>